Discovery, go and throttle up. Good afternoon from Starliner Mission Control in Houston. Thanks for joining us for today's first rendezvous and docking of Boeing Starliner spacecraft with the International Space Station. I am Boeing Steven Seisloff, and with me is NASA's Gary Jordan. That's right, Steve. It's good to be here. In a few minutes, we're going to go uh, go across the hall to the International Space Station flight control room for a look at uh, today's activities from that perspective. Needless to say, there will be a lot going on, and we will bring it to you as it happens some 265 miles above the Earth. At this moment, Starliner is about uh, 54, uh, 54 kilometers away from the International Space Station. It is below and behind the orbiting laboratory. There are not any crew members aboard Starliner today for this orbital flight test. The mission began almost 24 hours ago at Cape Canaveral, Florida, with a liftoff aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V. Since then, Starliner has been steadily raising its orbit on a precisely timed course to connect to the International Space Station in uh, a little bit more than three hours time. That's right, Steve. Uh, the Starliner just conducted a uh, plane change burn, so it's getting a little closer to the station. We're expecting another burn uh, coming up here in uh, a little more than three minutes uh, to do the same thing. Um, and we just got the go from the International Space Station flight control teams uh, that they are go for joint operations. And we'll talk about that uh, when we get a little bit closer to the International Space Station. Uh, but this is a game of precise timing, like you said. And uh, so far, the burns that have been conducted up to this point uh, have been looking good. And uh, while a lot of the attention is on the navigation sensors and the thrusters that are steering the spacecraft today, um, engineers are also monitoring the active thermal control system on Starliner to make sure it maintains stable cooling on the rest of this journey today. This is the first time teams have had a chance to do a lot of in-depth work with the spacecraft while on orbit. They're getting a sense of what kind of pump pressures and temperatures to expect of Starliner's cooling loops, which radiates heat generated by the avionics, the thrusters, and other systems, and controls interior cabin temperatures. The system has proven to be very efficient at cooling. ECOM is the, uh, is the flight controller here who is uh, watching over the uh, cooling loops today, and his eyes and ears will be on this system, and the flight director will be getting periodic updates. Ecom is Ecom is making manual adjustments to the cooling system that would normally be automated. If the control team were to get into a situation where the cooling loops were in an out of range position, we can hold at any time today in the rendezvous and docking. This is all part of the learning process for operating Starliner in orbit. And the bottom line, we have a very flexible timeline today as we head to the International Space Station. So far, the navigation system has been doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and we are on track to uh, proceed toward the ISS with first contact planned for 6.10 p.m. Central Time, 7.10 p.m. East Coast Time. You're getting a look at the inside of the white flight control room. Teams in this room here are monitoring the uh, Boeing Starliner. We just got uh, confirmation that this team is also go for integrated op operations with the International Space Station coming up uh, after a couple of these burns. Of course, uh, the next milestone that we have coming up is in less than a minute. Uh, it is called an NHPC2 burn. This is a plane change bird to, again, uh, incrementally raise the altitude uh, of the Starliner getting closer to the International Space Station. Uh, just in the short amount of time that we've been talking, Steve, we've covered uh, more than uh, 10,000 meters uh, or uh, 10 kilometers. Uh, so we are getting much closer, uh, and this burn will, will continue to do just that. Uh, and that uh, burn again is coming up in about uh, 20 minutes, or 20 seconds, rather. Station on two for SSC 15. 
Go ahead, Joe. Okay, the uh, CST docking monitor for Wind 16 appears to be frozen. Uh, time and frame are not uh, incrementing, and it's got a red border. And Shell, thanks for bringing that to our attention. We are working a WIF-16 problem, so we think it has to do with that. Let us keep working on that, but you can press on. Sounds good, thanks. And as Starliner works its way through orbit, it does have the attention of flight controllers here in Thank you. Thank you. here in Houston and engineers around the country. It also has the attention of seven people who are already on orbit, the crew of the International Space Station. Here at Starliner Mission Control, Flight Director Ed Van Sys gave his go, as Gary noted a couple of minutes ago, to begin integrated ops with the ISS team. That basically means that uh, the Starliner and the International Space Station flight controllers will make their decisions um, together as they move through this rendezvous and docking process. You're going to hear the word choreography a lot today because all of this is uh, very carefully planned out, all the motions of the Starliner spacecraft, the exact path it will follow as it uh, moves, uh, moves from its current position behind and below the space station. Uh, up to um, eventually getting slightly in front of the space station and pulling into the uh, docking port at, uh, at the forward end of the Harmony node. And we did have a good uh, NHPC2 burn, and uh, so they're tracking uh, uh, good performance of that burn. Uh, Starliner on a good trajectory. That's uh, one of the last burns outside of the integrated operations before we do uh, what's called a TPI burn, a terminal phase initiation. That gets us uh, really within the vicinity of the International Space Station, uh, but that NHPC2 burn gets us just uh, incrementally closer. The next one coming up is uh, an almost two and a half minutes is called an NSRP. C burn, uh, and that one gets us in the same co-elliptic plane as the International Space Station, really just flying right underneath uh, and a little bit behind, but but ultimately in the same uh, phase. Um, we did have the go for integrated operations. They'll do another go, no go pull to make sure that they can cross into the approach ellipsoid, that uh, outer sphere that you see on this graphic here, uh, and then they'll do some incremental burns to get closer to the International Space Station. Uh, you can see they're called... Um, inbound fly around maneuvers uh, until we get into the approach corridor. We're going to be seeing a couple of demonstrations of this Starliner as we get uh, within the approach corridor. You can see a couple of the milestones there on the right. It includes a 250 meter hold uh, and another 200 meter hold. That 250 hold uh, will be commanded uh, by uh, Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines who are uh, setting up some of their monitoring equipment. That's some of the space to grounds that you were hearing a little bit earlier. They're getting some of the systems set up uh, in preparation for that they're going to test the command capability uh, from the International Space Station while it's in a safer zone, the 250 meter. Houston Space Ground 2 for Chell and command test. With you on two. Hey, Chell, we are go for you to perform the space to space command test in step one of 1.102, one that's the CST. Approach and Retreat Monitoring Dynamic Overlays. Okay, copy that. You're ready for step one and one decimal one zero two. Stand by. Good read. So speaking of demos, that's word from the International Space Station that they are getting ready for uh, 
what we've uh, set up as demo four, that is space to space commanding, that's basically um, proving that the uh, crew of the International Space Station can send commands back and forth between the space station and the Starliner spacecraft, and that the spa Starliner spacecraft will do what it's supposed to. This is um, not a very challenging command to execute. Um, it is simply turning the, uh, turning the lights on and off aboard Starliner. Um, but that is enough to show that the uh, communications link is good and that the two spacecraft are speaking to each other. So it'll be sort of uh, flickering the high beams on the uh, on the Starliner. That'll be good. Um, now we did hear uh, a little bit uh, before. Command has been sent. And the PCS shows the backing light is on. Houston copies. And we confirm the backing light is on. Thank you. And hearing from, hearing from the crew there that that demo has gone well. Um, Starliner has passed its uh, has passed its test, and the uh, space station astronauts can indeed command uh, command the Starliner vehicle. That's uh, an important demonstration. Again, we're we're uh, about uh, a little more than three hours away from uh, from the docking, but uh, from that first opportunity, I should say. But uh, we are looking at this, at these um, demo opportunities uh, coming up, and it's going to. HL, you saw in your caution warning some that uh, two suppressed alarms came up for the uh, CSD RAIU. Uh, we it is, we do not anticipate that's an issue. We think it's just a mismatch. And for the prop thermal fault, um, that is just things getting a little bit warm. We're learning about the vehicle. Okay, copy. I see you both of those. Uh, thanks for the heads up. So the crew going through their steps to um, make sure that they're prepared for the uh, oncoming um, approach monitoring, and of course, uh, station Houston on two for Shell. We uh, with the docking light coming on, we can uh, confirm a good command link between ISS and CST. You can expect docking lights to be turned off, back off shortly. Okay, we copy. Thanks. All right, so that, uh, what you just heard was uh, the verification from the ground teams you see here in the white flight control room. We're monitoring uh, the Starliner and its systems on board. That's a good command link uh, with the Starliner. Now that test, uh, that demonstration of flickering the high beams, the lights on the, um, on the Starliner spacecraft is uh, verifying that good command link. And of course, we'll verify it a little bit closer uh, when, uh, when the Starliner is about 250 meters front, you know, right in front, really, of the International Space Station, that same command link, uh, they'll actually send a command halt, uh, verifying that that capability exists. Uh, but with a good command link, that's a good demonstration and a good milestone passed uh, as we approach the next uh, major milestone, which really is the uh, uh, NSRPC burn coming up in about 16 minutes. That's going to get us again in the same co-elliptic phasing as the International Space Station. And these burns that are coming up are being done um, with the uh, OMAC engines, with those orbiting maneuver and control engines, there's uh, 20 of them on the Starliner spacecraft, each producing about 1,500 pounds of, uh, of thrust. And they, um, they give the uh, spacecraft quite a kick. Of course, because there's 20, there's plenty of redundancy built into it. There's a uh, big set of uh, smaller thrusters, 28 thrusters in all, called reaction control system thrusters. Those are 100-pound class thrusters, give or take. And they make fine adjustments um, to the spacecraft. That's basically for maneuvering close to the International Space Station. And uh, it was kind of pointing, pointing the spacecraft. It'll speed it up and slow it down by a little bit. But uh, with these maneuvers that are going on, that's really the, uh, the domain of the uh, larger thrusters, those OMAC thrusters. So what you're going to see is um, Outside the approach ellipsoid with these burns that are coming up, Gary just mentioned the NSRPC. Um, 
raising the orbit and uh, closing in on the space station. Again, that's the work of the OMAX. And uh, the RCS is going to keep everything uh, pointed the way it's supposed to. And then when we get uh, close, especially inside the approach ellipsoid, when you start the uh, inbound fly around uh, burns, that's all going to be the work of the RCS. So um, fascinating work that, uh, that the prop officers and the uh, guidance and navigation and, of course, the rendezvous officer are all working today. So it takes a, it takes a team of people um, and a lot of different systems on the spacecraft, but uh, so far so good. So far, so good indeed. Those OMAX have been performing as expected. Uh, the teams have been tracking a good trajectory for Starliner. Uh, so we've been using those OMAX. They've been performing well. And Steve, as you mentioned, the NSRPC will use those OMAX. Uh, as you mentioned, though, uh, once we get into that, that sphere, um, that, uh, that's really where we rely on those smaller thrusters, those fine-tuned maneuvers. Uh, it'll be those thrusters that the, st that the Starliner itself uh, will use uh, whenever these commanded holds um, uh, are, are in place, and then of course the maneuvers themselves, including the inbound fly around. But uh, uh, there's also another um, major milestone that we'll see once we're once we're inside the approach ellipsoid in that joint operations phase. We talked about the commanded hold a little bit, that 250 meters. There's another one, uh, uh, that other that inner zone uh, closer to the space station called the keep out sphere. Um, they're going to try out a maneuver where they're going to try to get Starliner to cross the keep out sphere without it being programmed to, to be go. Uh, in, in that scenario, the Starliner should automatically retreat outside of the keep out sphere, and that'll be one of the final demonstrations that we see uh, before we get that um, approach corridor initiation burn to push in uh, and head towards docking. And you can really think about those two two zones in a bit of a uh, sporting sense because, you know, you have the uh, the shape of the American football as the uh, approach ellipsoid, and of course the uh, world football or soccer football here in here in America is uh, the shape of that uh, keep out sphere. So it's probably the only bit of sports we'll be talking today, but uh, it does kind of uh, give an impression of. Uh, that zone that Starliner and uh, and ISS will fly during uh, today's maneuvers. So we're closing in on 10 minutes before the uh, next burn, the next uh, burn to raise uh, the orbit of Starliner. That's uh, the NSRPC burn. And we mentioned um, that uh, although, again, no crew on board Starliner for this orbital flight test two, um, there are people aboard the International Space Station, of course, have been for more than 20 years. 
And uh, NASA's Leah Cheshire is over across the hall in, uh, in ISS uh, Flight Control Room 1. Leah, how are things looking over there? Hey, Steve, it's looking pretty good over here. The International Space Station is currently flying uh, just south east of New Zealand as, as Starliner makes its way to the orbital laboratory. Now, while there uh, is no crew aboard Starliner, like you mentioned, we do have the crew on the International Space Station currently monitoring. There are the seven astronauts closely involved in the operations, and it's been a busy time for them aboard the station over the last several weeks, as always, including with the departure and splashdown of Crew 3 about two weeks ago and the arrival of Crew 4 the week before that. Currently living aboard the space station are NASA's Bob Hines, Chell Lindgren, and Jessica Watkins, ESA, or the European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Korsakov, Oleg Artemyev, and Denis Matviev. Chellingren and Bob Hines took some time recently to practice with the software used to monitor Starliner's arrival. And you've been hearing the voice of Chellingren speaking with the CAPCOM, the capsule communicator, here in Mission Control Houston uh, as they discuss the vehicle and its arrival. Now, Lindgren and Hines will be primed to monitor the spacecraft, and they'll also help the team test out some of those planned demos that we have discussed and we will discuss a little more later. This is a live look inside the flight control room here at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. This team is monitoring 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, as those astronauts and cosmonauts have lived aboard the station uh, in different increments for the past 21 plus years. Your flight director today is Vincent LaCourt. He is monitoring all the operations here on the ground. Go ahead, Sam. Seems that the um, laptop power cable that goes into my CQ, where I have my personal SSC plugged in, is not working. I'm not able to charge the laptop anymore with it. The cobalt break is on, um, but the laptop is not charging, although it's plugged in. Okay, Sam, we copy. Station Houston on two for Sam and your laptop cable. Hey Sam, um, if you could just check the cable, make sure there is no damage on it. And uh, if, but uh, the easy solution here is just find a spare. And if you need us to direct you to a location for a spare, let us know. So I noticed that there is uh, one in the lab and there's also one in the jam that are uh, free. So I could uh, grab one of those. Um, I don't see any obvious damage on the power cable, but I did try to plug in the laptop on uh, other uh, power cables and it charged normally, so I think the problem is the cable. Okay, we copy, and uh, we don't have a preference on which spare cable you you grab. Just give us a serial number once you do grab it. Okay, thank you. And that voice you heard calling down from the International Space Station was European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy. As a reminder, we've got seven astronauts and cosmonauts still working on other various tasks, uh, including scientific research aboard the International Space Station. She was talking with CAPCOM or Capsule Communicator Rob Hayhurst here in Houston.
We have one Capcom in Houston, and that helps us streamline communication to the crew. That way they're only speaking with one voice from the ground rather than everyone operating on the various systems. Now, as you heard earlier, the teams here reported they were go for integrated operations. And those inter integrated operations will begin once the Starliner spacecraft enters the approach ellipsoid. We also call that the AE, and it's an invisible. Hey, Jessica, sorry about that. I'll let you into handover. Uh, regarding the half CTB 1363, uh, we're tracking on the ground. It is in the uh, Node 1 overhead 4 location. If you could check uh, the adjacent lockers um, or Anywhere in the uh, overhead four rack, um, we are thinking you will find it there. Okay, sounds good. I'll keep checking. Thank you. Hey, Hurst now speaking with NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins on her first flight to the International Space Station. And to his right is NASA astronaut Sunita Williams. She is a Starliner systems expert and uh, was just in Kennedy Space Center in Florida yesterday watching the launch along with her colleagues. She's made her way back to Mission Control Houston to help monitor the mission. Now we have gotten a look inside the room here at Mission Control Houston, right across the hall from where Starliner is being monitored at Johnson Space Center. I'm going to send it back to Steve and Gary because I know we're coming up on another burn that we will not want to miss. Thank you so much, Leah. It looks great over there. I know the, the room is in really good shape over here, pretty quiet. Uh, the uh, launch controllers just reported, the uh, flight controllers, sorry, just reported that Starliner is in good configuration for the NSRPC burn that is coming up. That's going to uh, take place in one minute and 30 seconds from now. Starliner looking at, uh, in a position to, um, again, speed, uh, speed up relative to the International Space Station and raise its orbit. All of this is a uh, Carefully planned, and all of these uh, maneuvers are to keep uh, to keep Starliner uh, on its precise path as the uh, International Space Station moves along on its own uh, on its own orbit. Of course, um, Starliner is currently just under 15 kilometers uh, from the International Space Station, closing in at a rate of uh, 5.8 meters per second. That's right. Things are trending good. We got uh, reports here in uh, Mission Control that the uh, Starliner itself is in a good configuration, uh, ready for that NSRPC burn uh, coming up in uh, just about 30 seconds. Again, uh, this uh, this uh, particular burn will get the uh, Starliner co-elliptic with the International Space Station. Uh, it's uh, currently below and behind the station. As it rides co-elliptic, it'll slowly catch up. Uh, getting closer from behind uh, until it's uh, 
pretty close to right underneath. Um, but before that, uh, it'll execute the uh, terminal phase initiation. Three seconds from burn. Prop reports burning. Uh, Mac engines performing well. Rendezvous reports good NSRPC burn. So Starliner remains on course for docking with the International Space Station. Good words from the flight control teams here. So with a good uh, NSRPC burn, the uh, Starliner now flying co-elliptic right underneath the International Space Station. And behind, you can see this plot graph uh, right where the circles are on the top left. That's uh, where we're going, uh, the International Space Station. Uh, so as it slowly catches up, um, uh, right now 14, almost oh, close to 15, just, just under 15 kilometers uh, from the International Space Station. We did get confirmation that uh, even at 15 kilometers, uh, Station Houston, Space Ground 2 for Starliner Step. And go for Station. Yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, Starliner had a good NSRPC burn, and from Starliner's cameras, we are seeing ISS. Awesome, we're waving. Can you see us? Almost. Ah, great news. It's really good to hear. We're uh, getting squared away up here and ready to catch her. You just heard uh, on from from the International Space Station. That was the voice of uh, NASA astronaut Bob Hines. He and Shell Lindgren have the duty uh, for the monitoring uh, uh, duties of uh, Starliner's approach to the International Space Station. Uh, joyously confirming that he can see uh, the Starliner. So we got a tally ho from the International Space Station. Uh, from this room, you can sort of see it, uh, but uh, there is a Vesta system. It's an optical system. We'll address that a little later as we get close to some of the demos uh, on what that system does, but it's an optical navigation system. Uh, it, too, is seeing the International Space Station. On the front board here on the left, you can sort of see the outline of the International Space Station right at the center of some of those images, that yellow dot. Uh, that's the International Space Station from those VESTA systems. So both are looking at each other. Both are waving. Uh, everything looking good after that uh, NSRPC burn.
We see that uh, Starliner has moved within 14 kilometers of the International Space Station, moving at a relative speed to the International Space Station, uh, you know, of only 4.7 uh, meters per second, of course, uh, moving at an orbital speed relative to Earth, 17,500 miles an hour, Mach 25. And uh, today's orbital rendezvous, getting up to that speed, was set in motion a little bit more than 21 hours ago at Cape Canaveral with a brilliant afternoon liftoff from Space Launch Complex 41. That is the uh, Select 41, that is the launch pad used by United Launch Alliance, and it is outfitted for the needs of a human-rated spacecraft like Starliner. It took only 11 minutes for the powerful Atlas V booster to power Starliner to, to that orbital velocity, put it on course to uh, track to the International Space Station. We saw some great views uh, from the rocket as it ascended uh, away from that uh, seaside launch pad there at uh, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That was yesterday evening. It's going to be um, it's going to be just a little bit more than 24 hours after that that uh, that Starliner is uh, has its first opportunity to dock to the International Space Station. And again, looking uh, looking back, that's a camera aboard the Atlas V rocket, looking back at the solid fuel boosters, uh, helping out. That launch was timed just like these uh, rendezvous and docking um, procedures are timed very carefully. That launch was timed uh, to coincide with the uh, time frame that the International Space Station was, uh, that its orbital plane uh, was in line in perfect alignment with the uh, launch site. And uh, as you can see, Starliner ascending through the clouds. Um, that uh, that view of Earth was actually some of the uh, first that the uh, Starliner system saw as they were calibrating their uh, their cameras and their sensors. Uh, of course, space station was at that point uh, too far away to see firsthand um, by the spacecraft, so they were just uh, looked at those clouds. Of course, there we saw the solid rocket, uh, solid fueled booster fall away. It was a beautiful flight, Steve, um, all the way up until the spacecraft separated from the, the top of the Atlas V rocket. Uh, shortly afterwards, it, it uh, performed an orbital um, insertion burn to get it into an orbit and then another burn, and, and uh, that set up uh, the vehicle to start its series of demonstrations. Now, we, we've uh, been noting a couple of demonstrations uh, th uh, throughout our coverage so far, and we're actually able to verify over space to ground uh, good space to space commanding from the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Uh, but shortly after the uh, Starliner got into orbit, uh, it performed uh, two uh, demonstrations. One was an uh, attitude hole uh, with its uh, reaction uh, control system thrusters. Uh, these, um, these small thrusters just verified that uh, the pointing and the uh, um, 
and the LVLH attitude, uh, meaning it's, uh, it found the horizon uh, of the Earth itself and was able to perform an attitude hold maneuver. Uh, it performed that demonstration uh, very well. Uh, and then it also uh, performed a demonstration of some of the abort burns, some practice burns uh, that would be used just in case there were an abort scenario. Uh, the preliminary data on that looks good. However, the teams uh, after the conclusion of OFT2 uh, will take a look at that data to verify the uh, performance of those two demonstrations. But again, uh, those, those demonstrations, uh, at least in a prelim preliminary sense, uh, looked pretty good. And of course, our uh, our friends on that Atlas uh, launch team, um, wonderful work. And uh, Starliner is the first uh, human-rated spacecraft that the uh, Atlas line of launch vehicles has uh, put into space since the uh, earliest days uh, when Atlas rockets uh, were used to launch um, the likes of John Glenn and Scott Carpenter and uh, the Mercury uh, 7 astronauts. So we're back with you with uh, live coverage. These views coming from the International Space Station. It's currently uh, just west off the coast of uh, South America, about, about to cross um, uh, the uh, probably the left border of, or the, the western border of Colombia and head on a northeastern track over to the uh, Caribbean. It's actually the uh, western border of Peru, now currently over Peru and again on a northeastern track. And Starline, the Starliner flight control team is about eight minutes and twenty seconds away from a go no go for the next uh, for the next burn, the terminal phase initiation burn. So we are keeping track on that. The burn itself will take place a little bit over thirteen minutes from now. Starliner is just under twelve kilometers away from the International Space Station, moving at a uh, relative speed, a closing speed of uh, about four and a half meters per second. And uh, Boeing's Jim Chilton talked a little bit about some of the work that goes into making Starliner a spacecraft that can dock itself rather than being installed on an ISS port as cargo craft are handled. And uh, he spoke w spoke with us recently about some of uh, some of that effort uh, going into the uh, Starliner program. The difference between berthing and docking is uh, when you're berthing, and this is what cargo vehicles do, you fly up close to the space station, and then the flight crews on the space station grapple you with one of the robotic arms and bring you in. Docking is different. Historically, crews fly for docking. Our first mission is autonomous docking, so for our technical teams, it has to really be right. We've learned how to fly in space by working with NASA, no question about that. But when you look at Starliner, she is a product of Boeing. We have a system called Vesta, and it has optical cameras and other kinds of sensors, and it's looking out. You can even look at the stars and find out where the spaceship is. But think of it as a set of eyes, a brain, and then the arms and legs are the things that move you around. So we have a, you know, the flight computers are the brain, and they and the guidance instruments know where they are. And so as you move through space, they keep track of that. And then there's a series of little jets all around the spaceship. And so the eyes look, the brain thinks about it, and just uses the jets to move where she's supposed to be. So what we're going to do is fly in through a corridor. Imagine a pipe you got to fly through that isn't really there. So the, the spaceship has to keep herself inside that pipe, not come in too fast, stop, get clearance, and then connect with just the right force to latch everything in. So this is not something we can take lightly. We, we are used to those spectacular flight crews. All our machines are made, typically, as a Starliner, where if the computers aren't going quite right, that flight crew can grab it and fly it. We don't want to have to rely on the crew. Not that we don't trust them. I, we'd like this to be a lifeboat, too. Hope it never happens, but maybe someday she's got to take somebody home without help. And so it's not for the faint of heart to get this exactly right. Starliner isn't a shuttle replacement. Starliner is a piece of something much bigger than just the shuttle program was. And if you look at what our space agency is doing now, there, it's, it's never been more interesting or fun.
And that's a look at uh, look at some of the inside, some of the thinking that uh, and the work that went into Starliner. Of course, uh, Jim Chilton there representing the whole Starliner team. Nobody does this kind of thing by themselves. It takes uh, it takes a lot of work by a lot of people. And uh, you know, we talk a lot about the machine today. We talk a lot about the guidance system, the thrusters, um, everything that goes into making a spacecraft, uh, making a spacecraft work, and, you know, very exciting stuff. Um, but, you know, ultimately, uh, like Jim was saying there, um, you know, it, it's a, this is uh, really a story of people. Space exploration is done for the benefit of people. And, uh, you know, it takes, takes a lot of work. And one of, uh, one of the people that uh, is kind of in the spotlight today is uh, Starliner's flight director, and uh, that is Ed Van Sice. And uh, he is at the helm here in Houston. He is NASA's 78th flight director. He was also the original uh, orbital flight director for OFT-1. Along with the entire flight control team, Ed is responsible for the operations and safety of the International Space Station. Starliner's human spaceflight mission and the safety of the crew. And he has the final say uh, as the flight director when anything unexpected comes up. Ed's call sign is Carbon Flight. You'll find that he's uh, very active on Twitter under that name. Um, Ed has a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Michigan and is a frequent lecturer for many human spaceflight operations classes at Texas A&M. And uh, outside of this, um, he has more than 8,900 hours on console in mission control, 6,000 of which have been as a uh, flight director. Has also co-authored a number of space-related books, including a college textbook. And um, one more quick fun fact, back in 1981, he was just 13 years old and Ed went to space camp. And as the 78th flight director for NASA, He's now in the Space Camp Hall of Fame. And um, in fact, today he's uh, missing out on a bit of a big moment for his family to be here. His, uh, his daughter's graduating high school and will be attending the U.S. Coast Guard Academy. So clearly service to our country runs in the family. Ed also has a son who is wrapping up his junior year and plans to study music education after high school. And uh, in addition to being a proud father and his role in space, Ed considers himself a uh, kind of the family shade tree mechanic. He uh, spends, uh, told us he spends a lot of his free time working on cars in the garage and uh, sometimes some of the appliances that uh, have broken in the house. Yeah, true engineer at heart, not. <laughs> That's right, Steve. He's the right man for the role. Um, he's been uh, he's been plugged in with the Starliner teams here and, and guiding them through every step of the way. He knows the vehicle inside and out, uh, and is fully prepared for for uh, this moment uh, coming up for for docking. Now, of course, his next uh, uh, major milestone as the flight director in this room is to conduct a go no go pull uh, for the terminal phase initiation burn. Uh, this is a very important burn. Uh, we, we've been mentioning a couple of the burns throw uh, Starliner's ride up to the International Space Station. This particular one uh, uses the reaction control thrusters uh, to move from that co-elliptic um, uh, plane that we've been mentioning, really following the International Space Station's orbit, but just right underneath it. Terminal phase initiation will bring it up uh, closer to the International Space Station until it meets about the point uh, directly right underneath it. Then we'll, of course, go through some inbound fly around to maneuver right in front of the station, but this terminal phase initiation gets us inside the approach ellipsoid. Now, we've already done the go-no-go no go poll uh, for the joint operations and are currently in joint operations now, uh, but the burn that we're looking at here is number four. You see that that helps us to cross across that line uh, and get to number five, that inbound fly-around that moves us in front of the space station Two inbound fly-around maneuvers that get us uh, directly in front. It's there where we'll see some of the action with some of the commanded holds and demonstrations and then of course ultimately a docking in front of the International Space Station.
In the room here, there are also uh, Capcoms. Uh, Neil Nagata is taking the Capcom station now. He's flanked by uh, NASA's Butch Wilmore, who, of course, uh, is training to eventually fly aboard uh, the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, multiple Starliner veterans here, Butch Wilmore here in the, the Starliner flight control room, and then, of course, down the hall in the International Space Station flight control room, we've mentioned uh, Sunita Williams sitting right next to the Capcom there. We're now about 10 seconds uh, from the go no go for uh, terminal phase initiation. This is uh, this is where um, Ed and Sice will pull the teams here in the Starliner flight control room, uh, and we'll just stand by uh, for the go no go. Rendezvous officer reporting that uh, the Starliner authority to proceed has been enabled for the approach ellipsoid entry. Um, we call it ATP. It's it's a uh, basically a computer keystroke. It is what the uh, it's the command that the rendezvous officer sends up to the spacecraft, and it uh, tells the spacecraft that it's okay to perform the next uh, maneuver and position itself for. Uh, the next burn that is coming up, as we mentioned, that's going to be the TPI, the uh, terminal phase initiation burn, that's going to be coming up in three minutes and 40 seconds. You talked about Starliner currently less than uh, less than 10 kilometers to the International Space Station, moving at a relative speed, closing in on the station at 4.3 meters per second. Go ahead on two. Okay, so in step two decimal zero five, uh, the MP 10.0 CTB pantry only has five CTBs, uh, not the eight that's called out. Okay, why do we copy that? We're checking. TPI burn coming up in 1 minute 15 seconds. It's the terminal phase initiation burn.
So again, we do have that go to proceed with uh, terminal phase initiation and enter the approach ellipsoid. We are about uh, 20 seconds away uh, from the initiation of that burn. Confirmation from the teams here, we are burning. And the burn has stopped. Confirmation to the flight director here, we have a good terminal phase initiation burn. We're heading inside the vicinity of the International Space Station. And our next major maneuver will be the inbound fly around one burn, but that uh, we have some time. Houston, space to ground two for Starliner. Station. Starliner has completed the TPI burn. Expect to begin the far field monitoring task shortly. In step one of 1.103 one CST 100 far field monitoring. Expect a start time of 20 colon 42. 2042 start time and copy all. So inbound fly around one, that next burn that's coming up. Like I said, we have a little bit of time before that starts. That's a little bit more than 45 minutes from now. That does not mean that the uh, crew on the ISS gets a uh, gets a break, or the flight controllers here who are watching the spacecraft carefully. But we heard we we heard a little bit uh, from the crew there. Now to address the uh, space to grounds, you heard uh, it's Bob Hines on board the International Space Station. Rob Hayhurst is the uh, Capcom in the International Space Station flight control room. It'll be him from the ground that's talking to the crew aboard. The Capcom's here really just uh, learning the procedures. Uh, no one on board Starliner today, uh, but of course the crew um, uh, is has uh, some duties ahead of them. Far field monitoring, you heard uh, coming up here, uh, they'll be uh, they'll be using the, the their monitoring tool. Uh, called the RPOP. Um, it's Rendezvous Proximity Operations Panel. Uh, it's a standard panel that the uh, space station astronauts use to monitor any visiting vehicles that are approaching the International Space Station. Starliner, of course, being one of them, but they can monitor the cargo vehicles, the Dragon vehicles, um, all of the all of the different visiting vehicles that approach uh, the International Space Station. Of course, aside from their far field monitoring tasks, just making sure that they uh, have the visuals and they have a good connection through the common communications tool uh, that uh, provides a link between the two spacecraft. Um, the system itself is called the C2V2 common communications for visiting vehicles. Uh, they'll just uh, continue to verify the, the far field monitoring and then of course uh, we've mentioned a couple of the demonstrations uh, that we'll perform once the Starliner itself is right in front of the International Space Station. We still have some time uh, until we get to that moment, that inbound fly around uh, burn. That's the next burn that uh, will swing the Starliner in front of the International Space Station. There's two inbound fly around, fly around uh, maneuvers to help us to do that. Uh, but that's not coming up for another uh, about 42 minutes. And while we wait for the uh, for the next uh, inbound fly around uh, maneuver, or for the first inbound fly around 
Maneuver, since we have a little bit of time, let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at the uh, full docking profile that Starliner is going to fly today. Again, it is flying itself autonomously. It uh, accepts inputs, of course, from the flight control team, but uh, no astronauts on board while the ISS crew watches. And uh, so here's a little bit of what that's going to look like. a good assessment, Joe, you can close and reopen the app and it should work.
So as you saw there, as you saw there with um, as you saw there, um, one of the systems that's uh, playing a very important role for Starliner today is uh, is called Vesta. That's a vision-based electro-optical sensor and tracking assembly. Of course, that's all a mouthful, so that's why we just call it Vesta. And uh, it is a uh, pretty sophisticated suite of, uh, of instruments that... Uh, okay, we're 16, uh, video is now active. I've got a good uh, frame counter and time counter. I have uh, recalibrated the... Um, overlay, and we're good to go. Great news, perfect. And FYI, we're... That was uh, Chell Lindgren on board the International Space Station confirming uh, he's got his monitoring tool aboard the International Space Station. His far field monitoring task uh, with NASA astronaut Bob Hines starts now. They got their video up and running. Uh, they're ready to watch Starliner. Uh, again, we're at a good uh, terminal phase initiation burn heading towards the uh, the next uh, inbound fly around maneuver that's uh, coming up in more than 30 minutes. And uh, their monitoring tool is looking good. You can see here... Um, some of the monitoring views that they'll be getting. Tally ho, we have Starliner as seen from the International Space Station. Starliner. Houston, Space Ground 2 for Starliner. Starliner is approaching Eclipse to monitor Starliner perform 1.103 CST 100 far field monitoring. You can expect calls from Houston every minute to have you reset the stopwatch until Houston declares that monitoring is complete. And uh, station copies all. We're ready to, to uh, start uh, monitoring with the stopwatch, and we are standing by. You should expect our call in about four minutes. And uh, Houston, uh, station copies. So this is a view of the Starliner spacecraft approaching the International Space Station. Still a little bit less than five kilometers away from the International Space Station. That's why it's showing as a little more than a star against the uh, backdrop of Earth. Uh, Starliner flying below and behind the International Space Station slightly as it, uh, as it flies its very precise uh, flight path up to the orbiting laboratory. Uh, beautiful views, Steve. Uh, we're seeing the, uh, uh, like you said, Starliner uh, uh, about four and a half kilometers away from the International Space Station, uh, which is flying uh, right over uh, the eastern border of Poland right now on a southeastern track. So it's in uh, orbital nighttime over on that side of the globe. 
You're seeing some, uh, those are thunderstorms in the back, Steve, uh, that we're seeing from the views. Uh, these are camera views that we're getting from the uh, outside of the International Space Station. Of course, inside is uh, NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines, who confirmed that they have very similar views uh, with their monitoring tools. Uh, they'll be, they'll be uh, performing, again, some demonstrations later. Uh, executing some commanding capabilities to the uh, to the Starliner spacecraft. So the International Space Station crew can see Starliner and Starliner can see the International Space Station using its cameras and instruments aboard. Uh, again we are working towards a uh, first docking opportunity at 6.10 6, p.m. Central Time, 7.10 p.m. East Coast Time. So this, uh, this, uh, this view of Starliner is going to gradually um, get bigger and bigger the closest it, closer it gets to the space station. It's, Starliner is currently 4.2 kilometers away from the International Space Station, closing in a little bit more than 4 meters per second. And here in the control room, we can see some of the uh, some of the imagery coming from the Starliner cameras, uh, which is uh, which are themselves looking at the International Space Station, looking at the uh, signature layout of the orbital laboratory with the uh, signature solar arrays and the uh, and the uh, pressurized modules where the where the crew lives, where astronauts and international crews have been living in orbit since uh, October of 2000, since November, I should say, of 2000. But this is the first time we have seen Starliner in space operating in its preferred environment. Houston on two, ISS is in eclipse, start stopwatch. Uh, station copies and starting stopwatch. During OFT-1, Starliner did not get close enough to be uh, seen by the International Space Station. And uh, but this time, Starliner is closing in and uh, following its exact course. We are heading into um, we're still about uh, 23, a little bit less than 23 minutes away from uh, the go no go for inbound fly around one, and the uh, burn itself is coming up uh, in a little bit more than 27 minutes. So you heard. Uh NASA astronaut Chell Lengren, who is uh, currently conducting the far field monitoring uh, steps. Uh, that So again, this task of uh, setting a stopwatch um, to, to follow the uh, Starliner spacecraft, it's a, it's a safety measure uh, and, a, and a check uh, to verify the GPS navigation systems aboard the Starliner spacecraft, uh, part of his uh, far field monitoring task. Uh, when we get at the other side of the eclipse, they'll just verify that everything syncs up and uh, we'll proceed uh, with the nominal timeline. Station Houston, all looks good. Reset stopwatch. Resetting stopwatch.
station Houston, everything looking good? Reset stopwatch. Station copies, resetting stopwatch. We were just talking about Vesta, and I uh, wanted to offer you a, a closer look at that uh, at that system, as uh, as it uh, as it steers Starliner through, and as it really finds its uh, helps Starliner find its way to the International Space Station. Everything's looking good. Reset stopwatch. Vesta is a state-of-the-art and highly complex navigation system designed by Boeing. It's what Starliner will use to autonomously dock with the International Space Station. VESTA stands for Vision-Based Electro-Optical Sensor Tracking Assembly. And here's how it works. The system consists of two laser ranging sensors, two wide field sensors, and two narrow field sensors, all of which work together to guide Starliner slowly and safely to the station. Early in the rendezvous process, the sensors operate in long-range tracking mode, monitoring the International Space Station from afar when it still resembles a bright, star-like spot in the distance. As Starliner gets closer, the sensors pick up more details and are able to see the ISS clearly enough to determine its outline. This phase is known as silhouette mode. Then, in the final phases of docking, the space station is close enough for the VESTA sensors to switch to feature track, where they use exterior features on the docking port of the Harmony module, such as handrails, stickers, and reflectors to assess the capsule's position and attitude. Starliner's VESTA systems are programmed to recognize these features as relative points of navigation, enabling the spacecraft to determine exactly where it is and execute its docking procedures with great precision. VESTA also gives the ground teams a highly accurate understanding of Starliner's location relative to the space station as Starliner autonomously makes its way to the orbital laboratory. Station Houston. Everything. All right, that was a look at the Vesta package on the front board here. You can see in the uh, white flight control room. That's uh, the teams here monitoring the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, that uh, that Vesta view is on the front left there. You see, uh, you, you can sort of see the outline of the entire International Space Station, and then uh, it's tracking the features itself of the space station, uh, and, and we'll see it uh, go through uh, s a several series uh, of different uh, types of optical navigation as we get closer to the International Space Station. In the meantime, Chell Lindgren is uh, on board the International Space Station, timing uh, some of the GPS, uh, or he's, he's timing the track of the Starliner spacecraft, making sure that it aligns with the GPS coordinates that are, that are being received uh, from the ground. Right now, the two spacecraft, the International Space Station and Starliner, are in an orbital nighttime, so they needed to do this during the eclipsed phase, which means uh, the orbital nighttime where the sun is not shining. Houston, all looking good. Reset stopwatch. And they're doing the methodical resetting of the stopwatch to time those GPS coordinates. Steve, that all this action is happening uh, in the room uh, right down the hall from us, the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Yep, right, right across the hall. That is where Leah Cheshire continues to uh, watch over the uh, ISS flight control team. That's right, Steve. The International Space Station crew is monitoring Starliner's arrival from inside the space station, as you've heard that communication with the Capcom here in Mission Control Houston and Chell Lindgren on the space station. Uh, Bob Hines is alongside him, helping with some of those steps as well. 
And while the spacecraft's docking profile is entirely autonomous, there are a few tasks that the crew on the space station will be remotely executing today that will allow Starliner to meet its flight test objectives for the OFT-2 mission. We've already seen one of those happen so far when Chell Lindgren commanded Starliner's docking lights to come on, showing that they can uh, have space-to-space -space commanding from the vehicle to another. We are looking into it. Do not reset stopwatch. Copy. Not resetting the stopwatch. Other uh, steps that the teams will be taking today is to execute a hold command at 250 meters. That will also be sent from the space station. A more hands-on process than the automated docking that you'll see today is known as capture and berthing. Now, this is where crew members use the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple the uh, spacecraft when it gets closer to the station, and then turn over the controls for ground teams in Mission Control Houston to berth or attach it to the station. If you've ever watched the arrival of a resupply uh, vehicle north of Grumman Cygnus, they use this process. So the crew has ability to command a retreat to Starliner if there are issues, and the flight computer doesn't, ret doesn't command that retreat on its own. We're testing out uh, those capabilities by, as we mentioned earlier, turning those docking lights on and off, and then executing that hold command, showing that we can send uh, specific directions to the vehicle. And this crew's been training for Starliner's arrival while on board the space station. Some ways they do that include the approach and docking operations, emergency procedure review, um, as well as undocking and departure operations, and of course, familiarization with contingencies. We're at three minutes. We have good vehicle time and frame counter on our command panel. Good here, Chan, chill, and uh, you can reset stopwatch at this time. We are getting some data. Okay, copy. You're resetting a stopwatch. Confirmation here from the ground to the space station that they are receiving data from Starliner to the station again. Speaking of the CAPCOM, we've mentioned them a couple times today. Uh, that stands for Capsule Communicator, but contrary to the name, the CAPCOM here, uh, Ray Hayhurst is, Rob Hayhurst is not actually speaking to the Boeing Starliner capsule, but to the crew on the space station instead. And this name originated when we first started flying humans to space, which were all in capsules at that time, but it stuck around. And the CAPCOM's job is to relay info from the ground to crew members in space, which keeps communication between as few people as possible. Again, he's joined to the right today by NASA astronaut Sunny Williams. She's a Star Starliner systems expert as well and was able to watch the launch yesterday alongside her fellow astronauts Butch Wilmore and Mike Fink. And standing there in the center of your screen is Flight Director Vincent LaCourt. He's gathering all of the data from teams here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room and keeping tabs on the space station and in close communication with the room right across the hall where we have Gary and Steve, which is the room controlling Boeing Starliner. acquired and the far field monitoring activity is complete. Okay, that's great news. Thank you. Station's discontinuing timing at this time. You copy. Thanks for the help. Good news indeed that the far field monitoring test is complete. And those voices coming from the space station, again, Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines doing most of the monitoring today ahead of Starliner's arrival. You've got a good look in that center screen here in Mission Control Houston of the uh, view that Starliner has of the International Space Station. That's through the VESTA system as it continues to get closer to the station. And again, as it makes its way to the space station, Starliner will be completing some demonstrations, those demos we keep mentioning. These allow the spacecraft to meet its flight test objectives for Orbital Flight Test 2. 
The first Starliner completed a checkout of its navigation and orientation control systems. Once in orbit, flight control teams checked the star tracker and it looked with Vesta's narrow field cameras to determine that the spacecraft is looking at the correct stars. And now we have that amazing view right in the center screen uh, that's also coming from Vesta. Starliner also performs early critical uh, tests of critical on-orbit capabilities as Demo-2. Uh, these are thruster firing and abort sequences. So when the systems perform as expected, it proves they can be used if needed. It was also executed early in the rendezvous process, which was shortly after Starliner reached orbit yesterday. The third demo is for ground controllers to test the VESTA navigation systems that will guide Starliner toward the International Space Station's docking adapter. As we see, that's in work right now and will continue all the way through docking. And the fourth demo is for astronauts on the space station to remotely turn on and off the docking lights, proving that the crew can command the spacecraft if needed, which was also successfully accomplished a little bit closer to the top of our broadcast. That's your check-in for now in the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Mission Control Center at Johnson Space Center in Houston. We're going to take it back across the hallway to uh, Gary Jordan and Steven Seisloff, who will continue walking us through Starliner's arrival to the International Space Station. Hey, thanks, Leah. Um, we're following along every step of the way. Uh, he, good to hear that the far field monitoring uh, procedure is done, so the teams are tracking um, uh, the positioning of Starliner uh, and going through the steps to make sure that it is ready to proceed with some of the next steps uh, before going in for a docking. Uh, we're still scheduled for an on-time docking today, 6.10 uh, p.m. Central Time. The next milestone coming up here is the go-no-go no go poll uh, to execute the first uh, inbound fly-around maneuver. Uh, there are two of these that will swing the Starliner itself uh, from right underneath the International Space Station, which uh, currently now is, uh, that's where it's, uh, it's approaching, it is right underneath the space station after successfully executing the terminal phase initiation burn. Uh, it'll uh, execute that first inbound fly-around maneuver and then a second uh, to swing out in front of the space station to conduct some of those demonstrations Leah, that uh, Leah uh, was mentioning. Now getting some views, uh, now we're having um, uh, good uh, video communications from the station. Uh, so you can see some of the docking lights and navigation lights uh, on the Starliner itself, the starboard and uh, port lights uh, shining right there uh, in the distance. The International Space Station uh, right now is uh, uh, currently uh, over the Indian Ocean, west uh, off the coast of Singapore. And you heard some of the communications there between the space station and, uh, and ISS Mission Control here in Houston. Um, flight controllers looking at that comm situation, but we do have data coming back from the spacecraft. And uh, telemetry coming back shows that uh, Starliner is uh, a little bit more than 1.1 uh, kilometers. Watch and uh, Russian laptop are ready for CST 100 arrival. Houston copies, thanks. What you're seeing here is a view from the Vesta system uh, as the, the Starliner itself gets closer to the space station right now, uh, just about uh, a kilometer away. Uh, some of the features, including the radiators and solar arrays, uh, come uh, a little bit more clearly. Uh, the outline itself is following the truss and the uh, pressurized modules of the International Space Station itself. 
uh, creating that T shape that you see there. Uh, you can see that we're also pretty close to underneath the International Space Station. Uh, we're expecting to actually enter the approach ellipsoid, which we've been getting slightly closer to uh, since that terminal phase uh, initiation burn, uh, which happened about a half hour ago. Uh, so we're close to underneath the station, but uh, we'll expect to uh, actually start that inbound fly run. One good IR sensor, and uh, just for your awareness, uh, our data uh, on all our displays uh, remained uh, constant and seemed to be valid the entire time uh, while you were uh, experiencing that comm loss. And that is what we are expecting. Good to get your confirmation on that. And that's good news uh, reported from Bob Hines, who is uh, continues to monitor the approach of uh, Starliner to the International Space Station. They mentioned a loss of communication uh, between the two spacecraft that they were tracking. We are getting data back, but Bob Hines uh, reporting that he had continuous data uh, throughout his monitoring procedures, and this, uh, this verification is good news. And we are about uh, 12 seconds away from Starliner entering the approach ellipsoid that uh, imaginary boundary around the International Space Station. Starliner crossing uh, about one kilometer from the International Space Station. And as you heard there, as you heard there, um, as Gary was just noting, that uh, the International Space Station crew could keep a, a constant data link with the Starliner spacecraft. We do have data coming down. Um, so, th And Rendezvous reports that we are inside the AE. That's quoting the Rendezvous officer, of course, speaking about the Starliner spacecraft. As Station Houston on two, Starliner is inside the approach of like. Starliner continuing to follow its precise path, moving ever closer to the International Space Station. The first contact time opportunity uh, today is uh, 6.10 p.m. Central Time, a little bit more than two hours from now. I will point out also that there is a lot of flexibility built into that timeline. Um, Starliner had an instantaneous launch window yesterday, but uh, when it comes to rendezvous and docking, um, although the procedures are precise, uh, they, they the team does give itself um, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of options. And of course, when you're when you're moving a, uh, a spacecraft around a uh, million pound orbiting laboratory, you know, a lot of a lot of care to be taken in those kinds of situations. Right now, Starliner moving in just as it's supposed to. Currently inside the approach ellipsoid, we are coming up on the uh, inbound fly around burn. That's the next major maneuver, and that's coming up in about seven minutes. The uh, International Space Station teams conducted a go-no-go no go poll to uh, ensure that teams are ready f uh, for the Starliner teams in particular to proceed with executing that inbound fly-around maneuver, and they did uh, They did pull green, so they are go uh, for that inbound fly-around maneuver. The Starliner teams will now go through their steps uh, to prepare for that maneuver, including conducting their own go-no-go uh, no go poll uh, to execute the uh, inbound fly-around maneuver, coming up in about six and a half minutes. Station Houston on two for no two hatch closures. And go for 
station. Yeah, you are a go for uh, the no two hatch closures. Uh, be advised that uh, there is no ventilation into Columbus or Jim in case you needed to get something real quick before the hatches go closed. Okay, copy that. We'll uh, put that in work now. And rendezvous officer reports that uh, he has sent up the command to Starliner, the authority to proceed to keep out sphere entry. That's important uh, because it uh, keeps Starliner on pace for that uh, inbound fly around one burn that's coming up. Starliner is currently 704 meters from the International Space Station maneuvering inside the uh, approach ellipsoid. Of course, uh, relative to the International Space Station, Starliner's speed uh, has slowed down quite a bit, um, moving now less than a meter a second, and that's, uh, that's as prescribed, so that Starliner stays uh, on its path and continues to uh, carry the momentum in um, in a very controlled manner as a uh, as today's uh, rendezvous and docking uh, continues again uh, docking time we're looking at for the first opportunity at uh, 6 10 p.m. central time 7 10 p.m. eastern We are three and a half minutes away from uh, the inbound fly around burn, the first one. As uh, part of the procedures to get us ready for this inbound fly around, the International Space Station teams conducted a go no go poll for the authority to proceed past the keep out sphere. This is after uh, what's called the approach corridor initiation, after some of these uh, demonstrations, including the commanded hold from the International Space Station. This approach corridor initiation is a, is a major burn to get us from the approach inside the approach ellipsoid to inside the keep out sphere. Uh, so the International Space Station teams reporting that they're comfortable uh, proceeding with uh, the next couple of burns. So that includes the upcoming inbound fly around burn. There's two of them, uh, as w and, uh, and, and as well as the approach corridor initiation burn. We'll see a couple of demonstrations in the meantime. Uh, in that in that uh, period, uh, including the commanded hold and the uh, automatic retreat, uh, we'll address those as we get past some of these inbound fly around maneuvers. And getting uh, ever clearer views of Starliner as it approaches. We see the uh, the lights on the vehicle. We're also seeing the outline no longer and uh, seeing the uh, conical shape of Starliner as it approaches. Starliner is currently 609 meters away from the International Space Station, moving at a relative speed of about a third of a meter per second. Starliner maneuvering inside the approach ellipsoid, going through its uh, carefully choreographed, carefully planned maneuvers. Getting a little bit of sunlight now, coming up, uh, reflecting, giving that uh, unique color to the Starliner spacecraft as it moves in. It's looking good, Steve. That uh, that sunrise coming up as the station and. Uh, Starliner, as you mentioned, which is now less than three, uh, 600 meters away, uh, are over the western uh, border of Australia. Uh, they're coming up in an orbital sunrise as they cross over into the uh, Pacific Ocean.
We're now about uh, 15 seconds from the first inbound fly around maneuver. Uh, we may see some of the thruster firings, but it might be, be a little bit overexposed. We'll see. But targeting looks good. Now about five seconds from the uh, uh, ignition time of that burn. Prop reports burning. Inbound fly around one maneuver taking place. Rendezvous reports good burn. That went just as it was supposed to. Produced great video too. <laughs> that was spectacular. Yeah, we got to see the uh, the RCS thrusters uh, that enable that burn. Uh, we got to see them firing uh, just in the right amount of sun and the right amount of exposure of the cameras themselves to give us those spectacular views. Uh, but so far, the rendezvous is reporting a good burn and a good trajectory so far. We'll continue to monitor as the first inbound fly around maneuver. There's another one coming up here uh, uh, in about 20 minutes. Those jets that uh, that were just firing there, those are the uh, reaction control system jets. Um, the Starliner being close enough to the International Space Station now, it's it's making very small, uh, very small maneuvers. Uh, so that's that's why you saw the uh, kind of that uh, exhaust, those plumes coming from around the perimeter of the spacecraft. And we continue to see the spacecraft make its own adjustments. It is flying autonomously, no crew on board. But uh, the crew that is on board the International Space Station will be treated to quite the view as this uh, as this continues on. Reminder that Starliner is uh, on pace for uh, for a first docking opportunity at 6:10 p.m. Central Time, 7:10 p.m. Eastern. Rendezvous reports were in good shape as far as the sensor readings and uh, the information coming down from the spacecraft. That movement is, uh, of course, because uh, having kicked off that inbound fly around maneuver, uh, the spacecraft is, uh, while pointing its nose, pointing its sensors, at the uh, space station, the uh, spacecraft is maneuvering up. No two hatches are closed. Copy, no two hatches closed. As the uh, Starliner flies uh, just about 230 meters away from the station, again, we just got past that uh, first inbound fly around maneuver. The voice you heard uh, from the uh, International Space Station, NASA astronaut Bob Hines, confirming that the no two forward hatch is closed. They opened it uh, just to circulate some air in between the pressurized mating adapter and get some things situated. Uh, they'll open it up once again, uh, not probably not tonight, uh, as their monitoring um, uh, procedures take them through uh, really late into the night uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, they will not open up the hatches to the Starliner once it docks until tomorrow morning, uh, but they did get some of the activities uh, situated in the pressurized uh, manning adapter. Uh, so we'll see that hatch open again uh, tomorrow and uh, formally welcome Starliner to the station. Uh, of course, uh, many milestones to get uh, to, to until we get to that moment. Uh, we're about 16 minutes from the second inbound fly around maneuver. For Jessica. Rendezvous officer reports. Um, of course, we can see Starliner very good here from ISS, and uh, the rendezvous officer reports that Starliner sensors are uh, picking up ever greater detail in the space station itself as, as Starliner looks on and makes its uh, makes its um, flight up into the uh, eventual docking position. Okay, I copy 
the uh, 4.0 CTB 5069 and uh, PMM and uh, say again the location. Yeah, it's PMM port one. Okay, copy PMM port one. And also when you do uh, the loading for item number 6.02, you can just uh, anticipate two of three 10.0 CTBs instead of three of three. Okay, hey, copy two in step six decimal zero two. I have a couple other questions for you if you've got time. Go ahead. Okay, um, in step uh, four decimal zero four and break, five break, decimal Jessica. zero four and six decimal zero four. Let me get one uh, CSD call up, Jessica. Break for Chell. C2V2 data rate change in progress. Expect calm dropout in five minutes. Four or five minutes. Okay, hand the station copies. All right, sorry about that, Jessica. Please continue. All right, yeah, and steps uh, four decimal zero four, five decimal zero four. And 6.04 uh, mentions uh, filling the CTBs with soft goods. Is there any um, other any particular restrictions on what those soft goods are? Are these um, for return, presumably? Checking. Station Houston on 24 Chell, you are go to perform step two in one decimal one zero two. The step two. Okay, and uh, Houston, we have CST 100 in sight. Copy, tally ho. Tally ho from the ISS crew. ISS astronauts can see Starliner directly. We are getting great images from the camera, of course. Yeah, these look great, Steve. The uh, International Space Station and Starliner are about to cross that Terminator line. We're seeing. Uh, uh, some of the clouds there in the background as we pass over the uh, Tasman Sea. We're just south of Tasmania. Uh, we're about to cross over the southern Pacific Ocean. Starliner currently 510 meters away from the International Space Station. Relative speed uh, continue to uh, to slow. Of course, Starliner moving very deliberately. About eight minutes ago, it performed the uh, inbound fly around maneuver one, and we have a second inbound fly around coming up in uh, 11 minutes and 45 seconds. Some of the views on the big board here at Starliner Mission Control. On the right, the images from the International Space Station. Those are the uh, cameras that have been giving us such wonderful views of Starliner as it moves in towards the station. And uh, over on the left side, that's the imagery coming from the Starliner itself. That's from the uh, Vesta cameras that are on the uh, nose of the vehicle. All of this working towards a, uh, a docking opportunity um, about one hour and 51 minutes from now at uh, 6.10 p.m. Central Time, 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time. And on the center screen there is uh, some of the graphic representation of the telemetry coming down from the vehicle, coming down from the Starliner as it uh, moves into position around the International Space Station. Starliner is heading uh, towards a uh, docking, a, a connection with the forward port of the uh, Harmony module that's uh, in line with the uh, velocity vector of the V-bar.
of the International Space Station. And we heard reports uh, on the journey to the second uh, inbound fly-around maneuver. That's coming up in about nine minutes. Uh, the team's conducted a, a quick maintenance burn uh, in between uh, IF-1 and IF-2, uh, maintaining that course and getting us on the right trajectory for uh, IF-2. Uh, teams report a good maintenance burn. Uh, and again, we're trending towards a, a, a second uh, inbound fly-around maneuver coming up in about nine minutes. As we look a little bit ahead, we see uh, Starliner making its maneuver around the International Space Station. And uh, there's going to be a number of uh, demonstrations uh, coming up. Starliner's been moving uh, pretty smoothly through its, uh, through its described course. But um, once it lines up with that forward port and starts to move in um, it'll uh, it'll make a few planned holds uh, 250 meters then it'll move to uh, inside the 200 meter point and uh, then one of the demonstrations is actually that it retreat that it uh, show this, shows that it can safely back away from the International Space Station so after getting to that 180 point it'll back back out to uh, 200 then it'll move in again and uh, have a couple of additional holds all of these are just as expected it's you know with the uh, spacecraft flying uh, without any people on board and it is flying autonomously just as it's supposed to do but I um, just want to demonstrate some of the systems uh, on this uh, on this orbital flight test Uh, you're getting a lot of uh, telemetry here on some of the, some of the uh, views you're seeing. Um, uh, the, the solid line on the bottom left is the uh, Starliner itself. Uh, of course, we're coming up on the inbound fly around maneuver. I did want to address the uh, top right, though. Um, that uh, sphere that you're seeing is almost like a protective shield uh, from the telemetry. Starliner, we saw that uh, um, uh, brief uh, comm drop out. We've got good tone now. Houston copies. 
And that was Chell Lindgren aboard the International Space Station, confirming they have a good link uh, between the station itself and Starliner. They're continuing to monitor Starliner's approach. He, Chell Lindgren, as well as uh, Bob Hines. Uh, that uh, sphere, though, going back to the, the sort of force field shield that's around the uh, International Space Station in that graphic, that's the keep out sphere. Uh, we'll see some of the demos that Steve was talking about, including the commanded hold outside of the keep out sphere. Uh, but one of the major demos that will be uh, uh, performing during the OFT2 uh, flight test uh, is the uh, Starliner itself will proceed towards that sphere, uh, and uh, it will not be given the authority to proceed past that sphere uh, to test the vehicle's capability uh, of an automatic retreat outside of the sphere. Uh, and we'll see that demonstration coming up shortly. Of course, uh, a couple milestones to get through until we get there. We're less than five minutes away from the second uh, inbound fly around maneuver. After the uh, second inbound fly around maneuver, uh, the next uh, burn will be uh, that burn that the international space teams, uh, space station teams have already given their go for, which is uh, approach corridor initiation. That gets us inside uh, the keep out sphere. That's the, the green area. And then, of course, in the mouth of Miss, Miss Pac Man that you see there, that's the approach corridor that uh, points towards uh, the forward docking point port of the international space station. Uh, we're not going to go straight in. Uh, part of the demonstration is to get into the keep out sphere and then perform a, an automatic retreat so we'll back out uh, before proceeding back in with the green light to do so uh, but that's uh, the approach corridor that we'll be um, uh, aiming towards for uh, docking uh, later tonight still on track for that 6 10 p.m. central time docking Rendezvous reports good targeting for the IF-2 burn for the inbound fly around 2 burn coming up. That burn coming up in 1 minute and 30 seconds. 90 seconds from now, Starliner remains on course for a docking at 6.10 p.m. Central Time, 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time.
Starliner currently 22 hours, 35 minutes, and 11 seconds into its orbital flight test two mission to the International Space Station. 508 meters away from the International Space Station. That distance, because the uh, Starliner is flying kind of around to reposition itself in front of the space station, that's why that distance is staying pretty constant, even though the spacecraft itself is uh, moving along. And good IF-2 burn, very short burn, prop and rendezvous. Officers advising Flight Director Ed Van Sice that the burn was executed just as planned. So that puts us on pace for the uh, next maneuver, which will be the ACI TIG. Sorry to give you all so many acronyms today, but that's the way this uh, space flight is. So ACI is Approach Corridor Initiation Burn. It is going to take place in 14 minutes and uh, 18 seconds. Starliner now inside 500 meters to the International Space Station. 478 to be precise, 478 meters. And a speed relative to the space station of 0.18 meters per second. Next burn coming up is gonna be the Approach Corridor Initiation Burn, ACI and that, uh, that burn will come up in 11 minutes and 25 seconds.
Now we're getting uh, views uh, from the International Space Station in the distance. You can sort of see the Starliner uh, uh, maintaining a distance of about 500 meters away as it made its way uh, through these past couple of uh, inbound fly-around maneuvers. Um, we did get confirmation there was a maintenance burn, um, a, a standard course correction just to make sure it's on the right path. Uh, so that's uh, two in inbound fly around maneuvers as well as a maintenance burn in between each of them. Um, con flight controllers will continue to analyze, making sure that we're good for that uh, approach uh, corridor initiation burn that gets us uh, in closer to the International Space Station. Uh, once we do that, the approach corridor initiation, that's where we're going to see some uh, of the more visual demos that we've been discussing. We uh, talked about some of the space-to-space -space commanding, and we referenced some of the some of the far field demonstrations, including the abort uh, te abort burn tests and the uh, um, uh, attitude control holding tests. Uh, these will be a commanded hold from the International Space Station, will be the first test, uh, and then an automatic retreat uh, once we get uh, to a very specific distance from the International Space Station, which is about uh, 180 meters, uh, and that's, uh, that's about the distance of that keep-out sphere uh, that we've been mentioning, so we'll see some of those next. But in the meantime, we're uh, in a good direction heading towards uh, the approach corridor initiation burn. And as we close in on the uh, time frame that Starliner is uh, heading towards the International Space Station, we're looking at a uh, docking time of 6.10 p.m. Central Time. And uh, good time to, to ask folks if you have a question of us here at Starliner Mission Control or over at the ISS Mission Control. Um, just ask on uh, on social media. Use the hashtag AskNASA, and uh, we'll look through the questions and uh, answer what we can. We are six minutes and ten seconds from the next maneuver by the uh, Boeing Starliner spacecraft. That's going to be the uh, ACI, the Approach Corridor Initiation Burn. Starliner currently uh, just about 400 meters from the International Space Station, continuing to uh, line up with that forward port of the uh, Harmony module. Now, as we wait uh, for that approach corridor initiation burn, let's uh, go ahead for Starliner monitoring. Well, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, as we work through the rest of 1.102, uh, Farmer will be on the comm uh, for the remainder. All right, Bob has the comm. Takes two to tango. Uh, Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines currently working the um, monitoring procedures for the uh, Boeing Starliner. Uh, they will be performing a series of demos, including a commanded hold coming up. It'll be Chell Lindgren at the uh, uh, at the helm, actually taking the uh, actually sending the command. Uh, Bob Hines will be assisting, and he'll have the communications. So we'll be hearing his voice communicate uh, communicating to the 
teams here on the ground, including the uh, International Space Station Capcom. Ray Hayhurst, uh, or Rob Hayhurst, will be the uh, uh, voice from here in the ground, communicating to uh, Bob Hines, who again is working with Chell Lindgren. About uh, four and a half minutes to the approach corridor initiation, we're taking uh, hashtag Ask NASA questions. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, some of the uh, some of what's happening today, please send those along. The first one comes from Alejandro, who's asking uh, about the crew sleep schedule. Do we know when the crew is scheduled to go to sleep today? Uh, well, they're shifting today. There are um, uh, seven members of uh, Expedition 67. The uh, Roscosmos cosmonauts are currently in a pre-sleep period, though they will be around uh, to help with uh, some of the final uh, uh, docking procedures coming up here in the next couple of hours. Uh, the rest of the USOS side, which includes the NASA astronauts, Chell Lingward, Bob Hines, and Jessica Watkins, as well as the ESA, or European Space Agency astronaut, Samantha Christopher Reddy, uh, will be in a delayed sleep period. So they'll have a late night uh, as they work through the uh, docking operations. Uh, the docking is currently scheduled for 6.10 uh, p.m. Um, Central Time, uh, but that's... Uh, uh, right after 11 o'clock at night, uh, if you're thinking GMT, 2300 uh, GMT, so it's a late night. Uh, they will not open up the hatches later tonight. They'll save that for tomorrow. There's no rush. There's no crew inside, uh, so we'll get through some of those procedures tomorrow. Keep sending your questions using the hashtag AskNASA as we take you through some of these next major milestones for OFT2. And we can see from this camera on the International Space Station that Starliner continues it's a methodical flight uh, towards the uh, forward port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Starliner's telemetry current show, currently showing a distance of 350 meters from the orbiting laboratory. Closing in at a rate of uh, less than one meter per second, about 0.2 meters per second. And we are two minutes from the ACI burn, from the approach corridor initiation burn. That's the next uh, the next maneuver by Starliner. Rendezvous, in fact, just reported good targeting for the vehicle. That means that uh, Starliner uh, knows where it's going and knows where it is. Both very important things to do when you're executing this kind of a scenario. So. About 90 seconds to the approach corridor initiation in the shot. Uh, you can see the International Space Station uh, as well as the Crew Dragon that brought uh, uh, four of the crew members uh, aboard the International Space Station today, including Lindgren and uh, Hines, who are monitoring Starliner's approach. Uh, we're looking forward to having two commercial crew uh, vehicles uh, docked to the International Space Station. We have passed inbound fly around two, or aiming for that number seven, that corridor approach. Uh, that's coming up in less than a minute now. Uh, that will lead us to those next major milestones, the 250 meter hold and the 200 meter hold, which are uh, specifically demonstrations for this flight to test uh, uh, Starliner's capabilities as it makes its way towards the International Space Station. We're standing by 30 seconds until approach corridor initiation. Again, the teams are go uh, to proceed uh, into the keep out sphere. We do have that authority to proceed enabled on Starliner. 25 seconds. Ten seconds to the burn, ten seconds to the approach corridor initiation. Prop reports, burn is proceeding. And cutoff. Rendezvous reports, good corridor acquisition. That means that the Starliner is uh, headed where it needs to be headed which is 
to the forward port of the International Space Station. Station Houston on two, ACI burn was nominal. Starliner has begun forced translation on the docking access. Prepare for the hold command demo per 1.102 step three when Starliner reaches 255 meters. Station copies good ACI burn and uh, preparing for step three, 1.102 at 255 meters. Good read. All right, you heard that the uh, command uh, hold is coming up. We're about 270 meters, so the hold's coming up very shortly. For that command hold, we're going to take you over to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Leah Cheshire standing by to take us through the command hold from the International Space Station. Leah. Thanks, Gary. And again, as you mentioned, this hold is being commanded from the International Space Station. This is not a hold that is being commanded here on the ground. Uh, this will be sent from NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren. He is aboard the International Space Station, arrived on the Crew-4 vehicle, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, and this is known as Demo-5. So when we reach that 250 meter point, which we should be coming up on very shortly, uh, away from the International Space Station, Starliner will demonstrate its ability to receive that hold command from the crew on the space station. So this allows us to uh, send a command from space to space. It's similar to what we saw earlier when they turned on and off the docking lights. Um, this is required to be completed for us to get the green light for Starliner to enter the keep out sphere. It's a 200 meter invisible line around the station. It helps the flight teams monitor the coming and going of visiting vehicles. And that's all visiting vehicles, whether they have crew or without. And Houston Station, hold command ascent. Copy confirming. Lindgren and Hines. Station Houston, hold confirmed. We'll pause here for about five minutes to perform demo objectives, and we will call you prior to resuming the approach. And station copies, standing by. Great news from the team aboard the International Space Station, Lindgren and Hines, confirming that the uh, hold command sent to Starliner is successful. Ground teams uh, commanding, they see that as well. International Space Station and Starliner are about 250 meters away from one another, and Starliner will remain in that position for another five minutes while the teams continue to do checkouts. And the International Space Station and Starliner now flying about 261 miles southwest of Costa Rica and Nicaragua, about to fly over those countries. Still in this 250 meter hold away from the space station. Again, this command was sent from the space station itself, not from the ground, and it was not an automate, automated command on Starliner. Current range 251 meters. Good LEDs on the panel. Houston copies and concurs, and we're just looking at demo data right now. Station copy. 
station confirms that the hold is steady as well as the team on the ground concurs and they still remain in that approximately five minute hold while they look at the data from the demo. Meanwhile, teams here in the International Space Station are discussing uh, the res res resuming from this hold. This view shows Starliner getting lined up with the Harmony forward port well, where it will dock in about an hour, just a little over an hour from now. An hour and about uh, 20 minutes, that is. Station Houston on two for Farmer. Farmer, Houston CST will be commanding Starliner at 2154 to resume the approach. Starliner will automatically retreat at 182 meters and hold at 200 meters. You can monitor the retreat per step four in 1.102. After that, we'll uh, resume at 2154, auto retreat uh, per step four. We'll monitor uh, at 182 meters and retreat to 200. Good read. And a confirmation coming from the ground to the crew that the hold has been successful and the data is looking good. That is known as Demo 5, that hold at 250 meters. The next command for Starliner to resume its approach will come from the ground team rather than from the space station to the vehicle. And as we were just looking earlier and discussing this view from the space station of both Crew Dragon as well as Starliner, this will be the first time that we have both commercial crew providers' vehicles docked to the International Space Station. Station Houston, Starliner has resumed the approach. And the station copies and we're showing the same. And with confirmation that the approach to resume, the resume, uh, confirmation that approach has resumed uh, for Starliner to um, make its way to its home on the International Space Station, that completes demo five. The vehicle now moving in from that 250-50 meter hold point. The next coming up will be demo six, and I'm gonna to toss it back across the hall to my colleagues, Steve Sisaloff and Gary Jordan to walk us through what's next for the vehicle. All right, thank you, Leah. It was good to see a good uh, uh, commanded hold from the International Space Station. Of course, uh, Lindgren and Heinz' job is not done. They're going to continue to monitor uh, the Starliner's approach all throughout the way, uh, but right now we're relying on the automatic software and the teams here on the ground uh, to get us through um, uh, the docking. Right now we're still scheduled for an on-time docking tonight, 6.10 uh, p.m. Central Time. Station Houston on two for Farmer.
We are going to be expecting a little bit of ratty calm, so if you don't hear from us uh, when you see Starliner retreating, uh, just keep monitoring. Agent copy, the whole code. Ground teams uh, anticipating um, uh, bad connection with communications from the ground uh, th just about the time that they're anticipating uh, that the Starliner itself will be crossing into the keepout sphere. Uh, it's making a good pace right now at about 0.3 meters per second to get to that uh, what uh, the ISS Capcom identified as the 182 meter marker uh, is when the uh, Starliner is anticipated to make that automatic retreat. Uh, right now the Starliner is out uh, 205 meters. Rendezvous officer reporting to uh, flight director that the spacecraft is uh, flying its trajectory just as it's supposed to. So we'll continue to see this picture come into a uh, better definition here as the uh, Boeing Starliner spacecraft approaches the International Space Station on this uh, orbital flight test too. Coming up to the top of the hour and what you're seeing here is the uh, Starliner spacecraft as it uh, approaches the International Space Station on uh, orbital flight test two. This is the uh, This mission is being flown without astronauts aboard the Starliner spacecraft. There are astronauts aboard the uh, International Space Station. These images are coming from cameras on the International Space Station. Looking at Starliner, which is at currently a distance of about 186 meters. Starliner is going to pause its approach at the uh, at around the uh, 180 meter point. Then it's going to fire uh, fire its reaction control system thrusters and back away from the International Space Station. That's a demonstration of its uh, of its ability. And we have word from Rendezvous that Starliner is executing Demo 6. It is retreating from the International Space Station just as it's supposed to. Starliner is retreating. Expect Starliner to hold at 200 meters. This uh, retreat is going to take uh, take Starliner just to the edge of the keepout sphere, which is that imaginary uh, boundary about uh, 200 meters from the space station. This is all taking place uh, 23 hours, 4 minutes, and 17 seconds after Starliner lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida yesterday evening. Everything's looking good. Uh, we're just passing 190 meters again. The uh, uh, Starliner is uh, automatically going to hold at uh, 200 meters uh, as part of this test. Uh, you can see some of the telemetry on the board. On the left screen there is the uh, VESTA system, the optical system on board the Starliner that's looking at the International Space Station. So that's the view uh, from the spacecraft itself. We're getting some good telemetry in the uh, middle screen there. Uh, sort of the mesh uh, sphere that's uh, surrounding the, uh, out, the outline of the International Space Station in the middle board there is the keepout sphere. It's that mesh sphere that we touched and now are retreating from to 200 meters. We're now awaiting the confirmation that we're holding. Houston Station, we're showing vehicle mode is hold at 202 meters. Houston copies and concurs. Good reports from the International Space Station. That was uh, Bob Hines, goes by the call sign Farmer, um, confirming that from the International Space Station side, they are seeing a hold as well as the teams on the ground. Station Houston Starliner is holding at 200 for four monitoring per step five and one decimal one zero two. And station copies go uh, for monitoring step five. 
Station Houston on two for uh, assistance with with 17. Okay, go ahead, send it. Yeah, looking at the overlay down here, um, we think that uh, we might need a calibration. Uh, we would like for you to turn on the calibration per step three decimal three decimal two in the setup procedure one decimal four zero one. Okay, uh, copy that. We have the calibration uh, overlay up at this time. I don't have uh, light boat on um, structure to be able to calibrate. Okay, so I understand. If you could just leave it uh, as is, we think we have what we need, but we're checking. Okay, copy. And one of our Ask NASA questions came in from Russell asking, what is in the Starliner capsule? Is there a zero gravity indicator? Well, you know, Starliner, um, as fate would have, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of imagery of some of the uh, cargo that is going up on Starliner. It was packed here on Earth, of course, and uh, loaded in. Um, there's um, 
the biggest bit of it is Rosie the Rocketeer, and what you're seeing there is some of the commemorative material that uh, has gone up. Those are university flags, and uh, we have some medallions commemorating commemorating Rosie the Rocketeer, who was named after Rosie the Riveter, and also continuing the trans the tradition of uh, taking tree seeds into orbit. Of course, we packed a number of flags and uh, some mission patches, all packed very carefully and uh, weighed out and uh, loaded into the spacecraft just as it needs to be uh, to keep the weight um, where, where it needs to be, keep the balance perfect. You can see some of that packing activity going on here. That is uh, there in Florida at the uh, at, uh, the commercial crew and cargo processing facility, the C-3PF. And uh, once uh, once um, some of the cargo is uh, taken off by the ISS crew, the uh, astronauts there are also going to uh, load some uh, used equipment into Starliner. Starliner is going to bring that home. That's going to include three NORS tanks, NORS and ORS. Um, that's the uh, nitrogen oxygen replenishment system. That's the uh, basically the uh, source of air on the International Space Station for the crew. Uh, you know, whenever uh, whenever a spacecraft arrives, you want to make sure to uh, put it to good use. And uh, Starline will be coming back. Starline will be coming back uh, and landing in uh, in the American Southwest. Of course, that's quite a few days away and uh, at this moment we are carefully following as Starliner moves in towards the International Space Station. And uh, we showed some of the imagery of the cargo and we also have some of the uh, some of the footage of uh, Rosie herself. She is in the commander's seat. It's an anthropomorphic test device, really um, set up there so that we can see how the uh, how the spacecraft uh, behaves in uh, in relation to the crew themselves. How a how a person sitting in the Starliner, um, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, situations, what kind of circumstances it'll be. It's a good ride up and uh, should be a smooth ride down. There you see the mission patch that uh, Rosie the Rocketeer is wearing. That's a unique mission, uh, mission logo for this uh, NASA and Boeing Orbital Flight Test 2 mission. And you, of course, can see, uh, can see the Rosie patch and uh, she is um, outfitted with the uh, signature um, signature scarf for Rosie. Of course, Rosie the Rosie the Rocketeer and Rosie the Riveter, uh, named uh, named after the uh, the women from uh, who worked in the factories uh, during World War II, building uh, building airplanes, including at Boeing, of course. So that was a quick look at some of the things going up, and the uh, the uh, International Space Station crew will get their own close-up look as they unpack some of that material and uh, load new stuff to uh, return back home. Thanks, Steve. Uh, keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll continue to clarify more about this mission as we continue our coverage to head towards a docking. Uh, right now, the Starliner spacecraft itself is holding at 200 uh, meters. Uh, right now, uh, at about 210. Uh, this is after one of the demonstrations of the Starliner spacecraft uh, to automatically retreat from the uh, uh, 182 meter keep out sphere uh, that performed successfully they're just continuing to hold uh, before uh, sending the uh, Starliner in once again uh, past the keep out sphere uh, to the next milestone which is the 10 meter hold teams here are going to hold here for about uh, 12 more minutes so keep sending in those questions
Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Starliner status. Go for station. Hey, Farmer, um, we have been losing a little bit of calm on one of the antennas on Starliner. Um, we will n need to use this antenna again at 2215. If it does not come up, we expect to have a uh, seven minute LOS until uh, we come up on the next antenna. So it just may delay the time to when we would resume the approach. Uh, we expect that we can make up that short amount of time uh, by decreasing the 90 meter hold time. Okay, station copies all. And I didn't say it before. 2015, uh, 2215, we'll expect the seven minute uh, LOS uh, and uh, copy all on making up the time of the 90 meter, 90 meter hold. All good copy, yeah, and during that LOS, of course, you will continue to be monitoring. Station copies all. Uh, we were seeing the the view of the Starliner spacecraft get a little bit darker. The station was is 261 statute miles over the northern border of Hungary, and it is uh, nighttime there, so we'll see uh, dimmer views for a little bit until we come out of the uh, Terminator line uh, and uh, start seeing uh, some sunlit views of uh, Starliner once again. Uh, everything's trending uh, well. We're just, uh, you, you heard that communications up uh, from the International Space Station Capcom, just holding here for just a little bit. Uh, the Avesta system, of course, is, is, a, is a complicated system that has uh, uses optical navigation and so we really have to look at uh, specific sunlight constraints the sun itself changes angles as the uh, international space station and starliner orbit uh, uh, every 90 minutes around the earth and that angle can change so they're just waiting uh, for just the right goldilocks conditions of lighting uh, and so they're deciding to wait out here uh, at the 200 meter hold so we're standing by uh, uh, waiting for the go to proceed uh, into the keep out the next hold uh, will be at uh, the 10 meter marker.
Flight Director Ed Van Sice advising his team to get ready to resume the approach. Starliner currently basically hovering just in front of the International Space Station, about uh, 206 meters. Rendezvous is given his go. Flight pulling the other controllers uh, here and their specialties to make sure all of the systems are ready. So far, uh, all looking good to resume this approach. They're going to move Starliner. Um, as Gary was saying, move it up to the 90 meter point, and then they're going to hold. That's a planned hold. Um, again, there's a series of uh, series of holds during this approach. Um, this is an orbital flight test. And of course, in this uh, in this current period of uh, orbital darkness. Uh, that's why we're not getting such good uh, imagery, but that's going to change in a little bit. After all, uh, when you're going around the world at uh, 17,500 miles an hour, you can do a complete loop around the planet in a little bit more than 90 minutes. So we should be out of, out of darkness in a bit and uh, get some good imagery again. And in the meantime, you can see some of the some of the graphics that the uh, control team uh, sees up on the big board here at Starliner Mission Control in Houston.
Station Houston on two for Starliner status. Uh, we do have good comm right now, but we're working through uh, a couple of small issues, so we're going to continue to hold here. And station copies, thanks for the update. So you heard that uh, call from the uh, International Space Station CAPCOM. That's uh, Rob Hayhurst uh, relaying up to uh, Bob Hines, who is right next to Chell Lindgren. They're monitoring the Starliner's approach to the International Space Station. It's currently at a 200-meter hold, uh, as was designed with the automatic retreat once it hit the keep-out sphere at about 182 meters. Uh, it's still holding there. The teams are uh, just assessing to make sure that the Starliner itself is uh, all in tip-top shape before they they go ahead and proceed into the keep out sphere. Uh, there are several lighting uh, stops along the, or, or hold points uh, along the way uh, to check for lighting and other conditions. The first one at 90 and then of course the big ones at uh, 10 meters uh, and we'll just uh, wait for the teams to make sure that everything is go before we proceed in. Uh, there is, we are still within the window uh, to make that uh, docking time later tonight. We're targeting 6.10 p.m. central time. There is, uh, there is some flexibility there in terms of timing uh, but right now we're still within a good window.
Station Houston, Space Ground 2 for Starliner status. Joe Farmer wanted to bring you up to date with uh, what we were talking about down here. On WIF-17, um, we are looking at the difference between the little T, Y in the middle of the circle and where Starliner actually is. Um, right now, we're, we're in great shape. Starliner is within the circle, so keep monitoring. We're just trying to get comfortable with why we understand that there is an offset there. Okay, copy all. Uh, we were actually just thinking about calling you about the same thing. Uh, it seems like that uh, that T is staying in the same spot uh, pretty much the whole time, uh, and then we're watching Dragon kind of, or we're watching uh, Starliner drift around. So it is uh, uh, obviously holding stable inside the corridor, and we'll continue watching. And uh, our pop is looking good as well. Great info. Thanks. What you're seeing on your screen now is what was relayed up to the crew, the teams, uh, again, we are holding at uh, 200 meters uh, right outside the keep-out sphere, waiting for that uh, go to proceed inside of the keep-out sphere. The teams, uh, both on the International Space Station side, as well as the Starliner side in each respective control rooms, as well as the International Space Station team monitoring from aboard the orbiting complex, that includes Bob Hines and Chell Lindgren, they're all watching their respective data. Uh, from here, you can see the monitoring tool that the crew is looking at. Uh, in the middle of the circle is where the Starliner um, uh, is supposed to be, and you can see the uh, just a little bit lower and to the right is where the uh, Starliner actually is. You can see the docking and, uh, and navigation lights on the forward end uh, of, the, of the Boeing Starliner. The, they just want to make sure that they understand some of the data uh, before they go ahead and give that go to proceed inside the keepout sphere. So the teams here on the ground, as well as the International Space Station, will continue to monitor and make, see, um, uh, make sure they completely understand uh, the data before going ahead and giving that go.
All right, uh, we're continuing to monitor uh, uh, the position of Styliner here. The teams believe they have a good understanding and confidence uh, to go ahead and proceed into the keep out sphere. Uh, words should be coming up from the International Space Station Capcom here shortly to describe a discrepancy in the data, more so really the, um, the graphics that are being drawn around Starliner uh, versus Starliner itself. And we'll have the International Space Station Capcom uh, describe that. In the meantime, the station and Starliner teams are polling uh, to make sure that they are go to proceed inside the uh, keep out sphere. So we'll wait for that word from the Capcom. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Starliner status. And go for station. So the, um, what we've come up with is the T that you see in the middle of the circle, for whatever reason, that is not correct. We do have very good confidence that Starliner is within the, the circle and as long as you see Starliner in the circle, we are in a good config. We can verify that through uh, RPOP and ground telemetry that it is in a good config. Station copies all and uh, we're com comfortable with that and concur. Okay, and with that, we are going to resume the approach shortly. And station's ready. Copy. All right, so those words uh, projected to the crew. The International Space Station Flight Director uh, Vincent LaCourt has given his go to proceed inside uh, the keep out sphere. Um, what, really what's happening here is some of the data that's being fed to the system that you're seeing is projecting a uh, false green circle and uh, an indicator. Uh, but the teams have, have uh, have um, identified enough confidence in the relative position of Starliner and the data that they're seeing on the ground that they know where Starliner is. So the is really the green circle uh, is is off position um, instead of Starliner. With that, they have the confidence that they need, and so does the crew, uh, to go ahead and proceed inside uh, the keep out sphere. Uh, we'll be seeing uh, that mo moment here soon, and we have it. Starliner is moving uh, inside 200 meters now. Station Houston Starliner has resumed the approach. Perform step six in one decimal one zero two. Okay, step, step six and we see resume approach. 
Good read. And also, Farmer, once we get to the 90-meter hold, we will reassess things there and come up with a new, um, a new time for continuing the approach. Starliner is on the move. Next stop, 90 meters. Starliner moving in towards the International Space Station. Keep out sphere entry coming up less, uh, coming up in about a minute and 15 seconds. Starliner firing its thrusters to move in towards the forward port of the the Harmony node of the International Space Station. All the systems on Starliner performing performing well. Starliner uses a uh, integrated suite for uh, for navigation. You can kind of um, it uses a uh, space GPS system. Well, I should say a GPS system that's uh, designed to work in space. We call it SIGI. And that's uh, basically how Starliner tells where in space it is. And then it uses the uh, Vesta cameras and uh, and and sensors to uh, look at its destination, which is the International Space Station. And you can think of it as uh, basically the spacecraft um, is driving itself to the International Space Station in the uh, same way a person drives their car uh, on a long trip um, using uh, using a Maps app to uh, kind of get into the city, get onto the street that they're going to, but then uh, using their eyes to pull into the driveway. Well, in this case, the driveway is the international. So that confirmation that Starliner has entered the keep out sphere. And uh, just to complete that uh, that analogy, in this case, Starliner's driveway is the forward port of the International Space Station. Yeah, this is a big moment for the uh, teams, Steve. Uh, the flight directors uh, exchange gratitude towards uh, one another for the teams themselves, uh, really diving deep into understanding what was going on with the discrepancy of the data. Uh, and with that came uh, uh, confidence in proceeding towards where we are right now. Uh, as mentioned, we're inside the keep out sphere. We're heading towards that 90 meter hold. Everything looking good so far. And while Starliner moves in towards that 90 meter hold point, we'll note that uh, we've talked a lot today about the work going on in the flight control rooms. Each of these, uh, each of these controllers has uh, has engineers, Boeing and NASA engineers, who are specialized in a lot of different areas, and they are they are all working together. Uh, you talk about uh, something that takes teamwork. There are uh, engineers uh, here in Houston. They're in Florida. Um, like I said, Boeing and NASA all working to uh, make this flight by Starliner successful. Starliner is 147 meters from the International Space Station. We are coming out of orbital darkness, so we're starting to see a little bit of the sunlight reflecting off of Starliner. This from a camera aboard the ISS, aboard the International Space Station.
rendezvous officer reporting Starliner sensors. Looking real good. All the uh, sensors on the nose of Starliner, you can see um, that's basically what's pointed at the International Space Station right now. Starliner maneuvering to uh, to keep those sensors pointed at the space station, just as it's been throughout this rendezvous and docking. And in fact, we're seeing some of the imagery coming from those cameras aboard the uh, Starliner spacecraft. That is looking right at the forward port of the uh, International Space Station. It's looking at the uh, forward port of the Harmony module. And you can also see the outlines of the GEM, the Japanese experiment module called Kibo, the Columbus European Laboratory, the truss itself, the crew vehicle. So lots, lots to see in that picture as the uh, Starliner moves in towards the International Space Station. Station Houston, Space Ground 2 for Starliner. Farmer, I want to let you know that we are not going to do the hold at the 90 meter point. Uh, that was designed to get proper lighting and we are already in a good lighting config so you can expect Starliner to press into the 10 meter hold point. Station copies, uh, we're uh, going to bypass the 90 meter hold and continue into the 10 meter hold. And uh, just so you know what we're seeing, uh, we're uh, well within the corridor and uh, looks like Starliner is starting to converge on the, uh, the center of T and the overlays. That's a good read and we copy. So Starliner is on the move and it will will stay on the move until it gets to the 10 meter hold point. At that point, Starliner will fire its thrusters and pause in its approach, but uh, the lighting is good at the International Space Station, some 261 miles above the Earth, and since the lighting is good, we're going to bypass the 90 meter hold point, go straight to uh, the 10 meter hold. So that means that uh, Starliner will uh, We'll hover basically at that uh, just 10 meters away from the forward port of the International Space Station, continuing to get uh, fantastic imagery from those ISS cameras of Starliner as it moves in to the International Space Station. In fact, the uh, imagery coming in uh, getting clear enough that you can make out the uh, dog houses. That's the uh, little pods on, uh, there's four of them uh, around the uh, perimeter of the service module. Those hold the thrusters. And those thrusters are what's doing a lot of the work today, uh, guided by the uh, information coming in from Starliner sensors, such as Vesta, kind of working working together. Again, looking at the view that uh, Starliner sees of the space station as it heads in, you can see the Crew Dragon at the top there, Japanese experiment module, European laboratory. You heard me walk through all this just a couple minutes ago, so apologies for the repetitiveness, but uh, you know, Space Station's been up there for 20 years. It deserves to be talked about quite a bit, I'd say. We're getting, uh, we mentioned uh, passing that 90 meter hold, which was designed uh, as a, a way to hold for good lighting conditions, but uh, teams uh, indicated that the lighting conditions now are, are looking good, and in fact, we're inside 90 meters now. We're at about 76 meters uh, from the International Space Station heading towards uh, that 10 meter hold. Uh, the station itself uh, and Starliner are flying about 270 uh, statute miles over the South Indian Ocean, crossing the Terminator line into an orbital daytime. Starliner currently just past the 75-meter uh, point, moving in at about a tenth of a meter per second. Again, heading towards that 10-meter hold point. Starliner holding its path just as prescribed. Uh, 
it's uh, following in, in that graphic what you're seeing in the green cone there is the uh, approach corridor. That's basically the zone that uh, Starliner needs to stay in as it makes its way to the space station. And we're seeing there's that uh, graphic from that you saw just a few minutes ago. That is, uh, that's the view from the International Space Station's monitoring software as it uh, uh, watches Starliner approach. Starliner is 63 and a half meters away from the space station's forward port. We should reach that 10 meter hold point in a little bit less than 15 minutes. Starliner continuing its approach. Getting this imagery coming in of Starliner approaching the International Space Station at a distance of 47 and a half meters. And the uh, imagery coming in clear enough to show the entry cover that has uh, opened over the nose of Starliner that, uh, that opened up yesterday, a little bit of more than an hour after liftoff. In fact, some of, the, of course, the uh, clearest images so far of Starliner getting to uh, getting to see some of the uh, livery on the uh, Boeing spacecraft and a really good look at the uh, arrangement of the docking lights we've been watching watching this for a little while now um, as Starliner emerged from the darkness of space uh, as a little more appearing to the crew and the cameras as a little more than a very bright light uh, closing now 
getting very close to the forward port of the space station and uh, really able to show off a lot of the details of the spacecraft as it uh, makes this orbital flight test too and as it closes in for the first uh, rendezvous and, and uh, docking flight path to the space station. No crew aboard the Starliner on this flight test mission. But it is a human rated spacecraft and this is uh, actually blazing the trail for a later crewed flight test. Also in this view, able to see some of the uh, exhaust plumes from the small reaction control system thrusters on Starliner as they fire periodically. Just maintenance. Uh, Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Starliner status. Joe Farmer, I want to let you know that um, we are not going to make uh, the docking window for this orbit. We expect to have a final approach initiation at 2350. So that means that um, we're going to be after what was the evening DPC, so we are going to abort the evening DPC. Uh, but if you have anything to tell us, let us know. Okay, copy that. No uh, evening DPC, and I will plan uh, 2350 Zulu. And that's a good read. Once we get to the 10 meter hold point, we will refine that time just a little bit. We'll let you know. Okay, copy all. All right, so you just heard uh, the International Space Station Capcom, Rob Hayhurst, uh, uh, communicate up to Bob Hines, uh, who's with Chell Lindgren. They're both monitoring Starliner's approach to the International Space Station. We're now targeting the uh, second uh, docking window. Uh, so the new time of the FAI, the uh, final approach initiation burn, uh, that gets us from the 10 meter hold point into uh, push push in for a docking later. Uh, that's uh, right now targeted uh, for 6.50 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, they did mention over the loops that uh, they will be uh, assessing uh, a, a new contact time, so, so we'll uh, report that as soon as we get that, uh, a new contact with the uh, uh, International Space Station, but we're no longer aiming for that 6.10 uh, p.m. docking. Uh, we'll aim for the next opportunity with that final approach initiation we're currently targeted uh, for 6.50 uh, p.m. tonight. <laughs> Starliner uh, looking good though. The um, rendezvous uh, uh, flight controller is reporting that uh, Starliner is looking good on its way in. It's now a little less than 35 meters uh, from the International Space Station. Slowing down, we're out about uh, 0 0.05 meters per second. Uh, we're heading towards that 10 meter hold point. And this does reflect the uh, flexibility built into the timeline, built into this process. Uh, you know, the first docking opportunity. It's, it's uh, as they say, it's it's a target, not a uh, not a requirement. So there's there's lots of a uh, leeway built into this into this docking. So it's not really a concern to uh, to have this adjustment. Uh, again, Starliner looking great uh, as it hovers out there uh, in front of the forward port of the space station. Currently at a distance, still closing in, uh, currently at a distance of 31 meters. And
Starliner inside 30 meters, less than 30 meters away from the forward port of the International Space Station. Continuing to move in at a, a very slow 0 0.06 meters per second. That is very much on purpose when you have two spacecraft moving towards each other. You don't want uh, don't want the two of them to uh, to cause any vibrations or anything else. Even uh, even in weightlessness, it's important for the uh, research racks on the uh, station that they stay stable. We've been talking a lot in terms of uh, meters per second and kilometers in distance. So just a, a quick translation there with um, with Starliner uh, currently moving a little bit less than 0 0.06 meters per second. That translates to uh, a little bit more than a tenth of a mile per hour. So that is how slow they are closing in. 20 meters distant rendezvous has just advised the team. And, and what you're seeing on the screen there, that is what Starliner looks like from 20 meters away in space. Continuing to capture more detail, the closer it moves in, of course, it's going to pause at, at 10 meters. So it's got another eight and a half meters to go on that. And you can see some of the uh, thruster firings there. And uh, what we're seeing on those thruster, on those uh, when those thrusters fire there on the front, those are rain covers. They uh, they're put over all the nozzles um, at launch, so they're just uh, remnants of that. They don't uh, have any anything to do with this orbital flight. It doesn't doesn't matter that they're there. It wouldn't matter if they weren't there. But what we are seeing there is that Starliner is uh, moving in really well. 15 meters, again, you can see some of that thruster firing. Um, that's how much detail we're seeing from these ISS cameras. Starliner inside 15 meters from the International Space Station. We're going towards that 10 meter hold point. Rendezvous officer reports that uh, Starliner is in the 10 meter rendezvous box. And Starliner is holding, hovering at the 10 meter point, showing. Uh, Station Houston on to Starliner is at the 10 meter hold. 
perform step seven in 1.102. And we're working on a finalized uh, FAI, as mentioned. And we are seeing really good video from the EHDC. Okay, station copies. We uh, see the same. 10 meter hold, uh, vehicle mode is hold. Step seven, uh, we have uh, brought up the 10 meter hold overlay and understand uh, updated um, time for the uh, initiation of uh, docking um, is forthcoming. Good read. So that uh, that transmission up to the ISS crew, advising them that uh, while we do have the uh, FAI initiation, the final approach initiation burn scheduled for 6:50 p.m. Central Time, um, the exact uh, the exact contact time or the estimated contact time is not uh, not uh, still being refined. Station Houston Space to ground two for Starliner final initiation, uh, approach initiation time. That time will be 2353. Latest FAI will be at 0036, and that will be a margin of 43 minutes. Initiation time at 2353, 0036, um, and that 43 minute uh, margin. Good
And that word up to the International Space Station crew uh, setting a setting a schedule for Starliner to perform its final approach initiation burn at 6.53 p.m. Central Time. And it will cross that final 10 meters in four minutes, making contact at 6.57, 6.57 p.m. Central Time, 7.57 p.m. East Coast Time. Again, plenty of flexibility built into this timeline but that is the current uh, the current schedule. No rush. These are all targets, not requirements. And uh, while Starliner pauses right here at this 10 meter hold point, we can we can really see some spectacular footage of the uh, of the spacecraft. Again, this is the first time Starliner has been viewed in space from outside the spacecraft. So, first time we are seeing uh, Starliner. You can. The closer it's gotten, the more details, of course, you can make out. In fact, you can even see the uh, the center line uh, window there in the uh, docking hatch of Starliner at the nose. A little bit of a turquoise look to it. Uh, which again tells you how detailed this camera is. All right, again, Starliner's holding at 10 meters. In the meantime, we'll continue to take Ask NASA questions to make sure that we're giving you the good information uh, about what's happening. Uh, this first question comes from Lysisterm, who's asking, uh, what is the plane of the docking of Starliner with respect to Earth? Is it above, below, or beside the International Space Station? So uh, right now, at this moment, the 10-meter hold, um, it is what's called on what's called the V-bar, or the velocity bar. Uh, really, this is directly in front uh, of the International Space Station. So both of them are flying simultaneously at the same speed at the same time. Uh, and it's holding as they're traveling about 17,500 miles per hour uh, around the Earth.
what you're seeing is a, a careful and methodical approach in order to get to this point, right? It doesn't go immediately up and in front of the International Space Station. Uh, they both have the same relative velocity, are traveling on the exact same plane, uh, and it's taken a lot to uh, to get to this point. Um, in the, since we've uh, in the journey to get to this point uh, has been a series of burns, uh, but since this is a flight test, uh, we've also put Starliner through a number of demonstrations to test its capabilities fully. Uh, we did have a commanded hold uh, that was sent from the International Space Station, and that was successful. Uh, we also tested its retreat ability uh, to cross the keep out sphere, uh, recognize that it did not have the authority to proceed, and then retreat outside of the keep out sphere to 200 meters where it held uh, for a little bit until it was given a go uh, to proceed back in uh, to where it is now at 10 meters. Continue to send your questions in using the hashtag AskNASA. Again, we're holding uh, at 10 meters uh, that uh, flight approach initiation burn targeted for 6.53 p.m. tonight. Uh, that gives us an earliest docking opportunity uh, at 6.57 p.m. Again, great images coming from the International Space Station cameras showing the Starliner spacecraft as it hovers 10 meters away from the International Space Station. The uh, docking time we are we are looking at now, 6.57 p.m. Central Time. That means that uh, should take about uh, four minutes for Starliner to cross that last, uh, that last 10 meters. While we've been watching these uh, great images of Starliner here in the Starliner Mission Control Center across the hall in the ISS Flight Control Center where they're watching with uh, equal amounts of attention. The flight team is uh, keeping the uh, orbital laboratory lined up for this work and over there is uh, NASA's Leah Cheshire. Leah, how's it looking? Hey Steve, uh, just like these views, it's looking pretty good. The teams over here have been monitoring the arrival of Starliner uh, and working with the teams over in the Starliner flight control room to make the decisions like to go ahead and pass through that 90 meter hold point and come on up to this 10 meter hold point where we have Starliner right now. Uh, again, just 10 meters in front of the node to forward port. That's the Harmony module on the International Space Station. That's also where the Crew Dragon uh, that brought Crew 4 is docked to the zenith or the space facing port. The space station is currently traveling about 261 miles above the South Pacific Ocean. And you can see that it's also joining four other uh, visiting vehicles in addition to Crew Dragon once Starliner arrives. The Cygnus 17 is docked to the space station and brought along with it cargo and resupply for the crew. Soyuz MS-21 brought up three of the Roscosmos cosmonauts now living on the space station. Progress 79 and Progress 80 are two Russian vehicles that also brought up uh, resupplies for the space station. Space ground two for Starliner. Go ahead. 
Hey, Bob, just want to let you know that uh, we are seeing all sensors working great. The, the hold looks really good and um, performance is really good. We appreciate you continuing to watch it. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, we're monitoring. It looks uh, looks really good. Right as it uh, starts approaching a boundary, it reverses direction and uh, seems to be station keeping really well. Concur. Again, those voices you're hearing from the International Space Station belong to NASA astronaut Bob Hines, who was on his first mission to space, and Chell Lindgren. There are seven people living on the space station, and it's currently about 11.23 p.m. GMT, which is the time zone that the space station uses. They uh, will be getting ready to go to sleep. However, since we have shifted the docking time of Starliner, we'll still have Lindgren and Hines monitoring its approach and arrival. Just a reminder, if you're watching live and you have a Twitter account, you can ask us your questions with the hashtag AskNASA. This one comes from Tiffany, who wants to know what time the hatch will be open tomorrow. Our hatch coverage, uh, our, our coverage of the hatch opening will begin at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow, and we expect to see the hatch opening around 11.45 a.m. Eastern. We'll also have some welcome remarks by the crew on board, so make sure you tune in here on NASA TV. International Space Station and Boeing flying just 10 meters apart from each other. About 260 miles over Mexico. Again, we are in a hold point, uh, that 10 meter mark, and uh, we expect to see that resume around 6.53 p.m. Central Time or 7.53 p.m. Eastern Time. That's uh, constantly under review. We want to make sure that the uh, station has a uh, good signal with the ground and with Starliner, so that time may change, but uh, we're looking for that target time. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for update to planned FAI. Okay. 
Go ahead. Farmer, the planned FAI time will be 2357. That will get us past a TDRS handover and ensure a good solid comm. Okay, copy that new uh, new FAA time of uh, 2357. Thanks. Good read. And just as I was mentioning, uh, the final approach initiation will begin at a now shifted time of 23.57 GMT, the time used aboard the International Space Station. So we're less than 30 minutes away from that final approach initiation now. We expect the, expect the docking to come uh, just after 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific, or 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central. All right, as we continue monitoring this hold, uh, Starliner being 10 meters away from the forward Harmony port on the International Space Station, uh, we are, as I mentioned, continuing to watch everything. It's moving pretty smoothly here from the International Space Station flight control room, and Starliner is holding steady at that point. To keep us moving through the evening, I'm going to send you back over to the Starliner flight control room across the hall with Steve and Gary. Thank you very much, Leah. Great update. Um, that uh, that word again coming up on the timing. Coming up on the uh, timing adjustment. Um, as we've mentioned, there's a lot of flexibility in this timeline, and um, radioing uh, radioing the crew of the ISS that uh, we are looking at. Uh, Final approach initiation burn at 6.57 p.m. Central Time, 7.57 p.m. Eastern Time. That's going to put us at, uh, at a docking time of 7.01 p.m. Central Time, 8.01 p.m. Eastern. So from the current 10-meter hold point that you see there on your screen, uh, it'll take four minutes for Star Liner once that. Houston, Space Ground 2 for timeline updates. Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, the Node 2 entry activity, the no exercise activity, and the maneuver after docking, they will, of course, shift with the new docking time and those are on the crew band. Okay, copy all. We're, uh, we're tracking that stuff. Thank you. And you just heard uh, there, they, of course, uh, this is not the only thing on their timeline. And uh, during the docking operations, during dynamic operations, they try to minimize uh, vibrations uh, on the International Space Station environment as much as possible uh, as uh, to make sure that uh, the docking of Starliner to the station uh, is, is as smooth as possible. Uh, so there is a constraint on their timeline on when uh, the crew members inside the International Space Station can exercise. Of course, Lindgren and Hines are very busy with the monitoring operations. They're taking a look, and uh, they have reported that uh, the Starliner is, is doing a very good job at station keeping, meaning staying really and holding at that 10-meter uh, hold point. But the rest of the crew members on board are in a pre-sleep or sleep period, and they have the ability to exercise if, if required. And CST prefect. With you on two. 
Hey, Jessica, we estimate you have about 45 minutes left of CSD prepack. The good news is we are going to schedule you a block tomorrow to finish that up so you can enjoy the, the rest of the rendezvous and talk. Okay, I copy um, that there's about 45 minutes left. Um, the only remaining steps that I'm tracking um, are just uh, the, the step nine at the end um, that involves going into GEM and Columbus, which are, are obviously closed up um, at, the, at this moment. Okay, that is good info. Thank you, Jessica. And we have a, another question that's come in from Ask NASA, from Richard. It appears there are two objects at the top doghouse that wave back and forth from time to time. What are those? We've been getting this question a lot, so um, so let's take that on. That It is uh, really simple. They're rain covers that are over each thruster. When the rocket is there at the launch pad, um, we, we put those... Um, and put those covers over them and it protects them. And uh, as soon as uh, most of them fall away during during ascent, during that, uh, during just the uh, aerodynamic forces. So it is, um, that's what normally happens. In this case, the covers uh, stuck around a little bit longer to make this trip. So the fluttering that you're seeing is caused by the uh, thrusters firing. Uh, they are very small thrusters, and they're just performing little maintenance burns, uh, we call them, um, basically keeping Starliner in its position in this 10-meter hover. So little thin sheets of plastic, um, keeping everything together as it heads out, and, and uh, that's all there is to that story, I guess. For 5.04 and 6.04, the filler material can be a mix of bubble wrap foam. So as we're looking at Starliner um, hovering here at the 10 meter hold point. Okay, copy. That helps a lot. Thanks. We are seeing the, the graphic and the uh, representation there um, as Starliner continues to hold. So a quick uh, quick recap on our expected times coming up for final approach initiation. That's going to start at uh, 6.57 p.m. Central Time. And then Starliner will uh, move ahead at a very steady, very deliberate pace and uh, go those last 10 meters to the forward port of the International Space Station with a uh, contact time of 7.01 p.m. Central Time, 8.01 Eastern Time. That adjustment was made because it uh, gives the spacecraft and the space station, uh, gets them a little bit past the uh, point of what is called a Tedris handover. The uh, spacecraft communicate uh, with the ground through NASA's Tedris system, telemetry and data relay satellite system. And um, there's basically a series of communication satellites in, in uh, geosynchronous orbit more than 22,000 miles above Earth, and they, they relay, just like their name implies, they relay uh, data um, from the spacecraft in Earth orbit down to, uh, down to the ground. So in order to uh, have the uh, Starliner and International Space Station on a uh, 
good luck there with the Tedris. They decided to uh, hold off the docking for a few minutes, um, which is positioning us just fine. And there's uh, plenty of flexibility and plenty of uh, plenty of chances to to uh, get this done this evening. As the International Space Station and Starliner fly over the Earth, uh, they hand over the communications between some of the tracking and data relay satellites that provide uh, some of the video that you've been seeing from low Earth orbit. Uh, right now we are in a handover period, uh, so, so uh, we'll be regaining some of those views from the cameras outside of the International Space Station here uh, very shortly. In the meantime, uh, the Starliner continuing to hold at that 10-meter uh, point. We're, uh, waiting for good lighting conditions and an evaluation and a go to proceed uh, for docking. Right now we're targeting uh, contact with the International Space Station shortly after 7 p.m. And that 7 p.m. is central time. All right, uh, as we continue to hold here uh, for the next few minutes up until that uh, FAI, that final approach initiation, that's the burn that's going to push us in for a docking, we'll continue to uh, monitor hashtag Ask NASA uh, for additional questions. So keep sending them in. We're getting a lot of good ones uh, to help us understand the Starliner story on OFT2, Orbital Flight Test 2. This next one's from Jordan, uh, who's asking uh, mostly about the docked phase. What else would a Starliner do while attached to the International Space Station. Well, being that this is a flight test, uh, really this is the, the first flight of the Starliner to the International Space Station, but it is a test through and through. We've been seeing a lot of demonstrations of the Starliner's capabilities up through this point. Uh, we've seen commanded holds, we've seen a test of some of the abort engines, a test of uh, uh, it being able to maintain attitude in a hold position, uh, testing of the Vesta system and uh, space-to-space -space commanding, the whole lot. 
But the testing does not stop once it's docked to the International Space Station. The flight control teams will continue to check out its, uh, its connection with the International Space Station, uh, verifying good communication data, power paths as it makes uh, umbilical mating uh, to draw power and, and uh, connect those, some of those communications. They'll be testing out the various systems, uh, including its quiescent phase, what it will be like when it's docked for long periods of time, uh, as its uh, main objective is for long-duration crew missions uh, to bring crews up to the International Space Station. There's also about 500 pounds of NASA cargo and 300 pounds of Boeing cargo inside. Uh, they'll be able to take some of those goodies and bring them inside the International Space Station. Starliner will also be uh, bringing some uh, equipment home, including some nitrogen oxygen recharge system tanks uh, uh, for refurbishment so they can be reflown at a later time. So the crew, uh, the Starliner is expected to be docked to station for a minimum of five days to allow proper testing, to allow cr cargo transfer uh, enough time for all of those uh, items to be executed uh, before it undocks and returns to Earth. Very good questions. Keep sending them in uh, using the hashtag AskNASA. One of the other questions that we're hearing from a little bit is on this graphic display, what is the, what does the red squiggly line show? That is, uh, I've, we've been using the word hover, Starliner is hovering at that 10 meter point. That's basically just the uh, trace that the Starliner is uh, making at that 10 meter hold point, um, holding it pretty well. Through orbital mechanics, there's a natural tendency to, uh, to pull down in relation to that uh, white line there and uh, the thrusters on Starliner uh, periodically fire and uh, move it up a little bit closer but Starliner is in the uh, in the corridor exactly where it needs to be 10 meters away from the International Space Station it is holding here until 657 p.m. Central Time that's in about 11 minutes from now and then it'll fire uh, some some other thrusters and uh, start a slow move in to cover that last 10 meters. It'll take four minutes to do that, and that's going to bring us up to a uh, contact time of uh, 7:01 p.m. Central Time. Station Houston Space to Ground 2 for FAI. Go for station. The Starliner team is working on a small issue with the, uh, the NDS system, and uh, so we are going to assess that and we'll get back to you on a new FAI time. Um, while I have you, though, wanted to sync up with you uh, that uh, we wanted to confirm that in step seven of one decimal one zero two, I want to confirm you completed the uh, capture review at the end of that step. Uh, 
and copy the uh, capture review uh, that is uh, in work at this time, and uh, and we'll uh, call you back when we're done. Sounds good. Thanks. And you heard that call going up to the International Space Station crew, outlining that uh, flight controllers are looking at the uh, docking system on Starliner. There's, um, there'll be an adjusted... There'll be an adjusted uh, final approach initiation time, and that will bring, of course, an adjusted contact time as well. And we're getting details on the uh, docking system. Flight controller is reporting to flight director at Van Sice that the docking ring is extended. Flight controller is basically looking at the uh, steps they will take as a uh, after Starliner makes contact, since that docking ring is uh, is already extended and it will be retracted to uh, complete the uh, the docking of Starliner.
Station Houston Space Ground 2 for docking status. Former Station. Former, I wanted to let you know that um, a few of the NDS components did not go to the uh, an intended config. Therefore, we need to retract the docking ring to reset the system. We're expecting that to take about 30 minutes. We will come back to you with a new um, FAI time. Okay, copy that. 30 minutes to retract uh, the ring and then uh, re-extend it. Uh, and just uh, confirm we're happy holding at 10 meters uh, while we do all the troubleshooting. Copy. Thanks. So you heard that report from the International Space Station uh, CAPCOM, uh, Rob Hayhurst uh, communicating up to NASA astronaut Bob Hines. He's with Chell Lindgren. They're inside the International Space Station right now monitoring uh, Starliner uh, as it holds at the 10-meter point. Uh, the NASA docking system, the NDS, uh, retracted its ring fully. They were checking out some of the systems, but uh, there are some that uh, still need to be verified. So the teams here, after some discussion, uh, elected to retract the ring. They're going to go ahead and, and pull that back in and then reset the system to try again. Uh, that process is expected to take 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, ISS crew is ready for final approach monitoring and capture review is complete. Houston Gobbies, thanks for the words. And the uh, space station crew, of course, uh, sticking with it, uh, making sure that they are continuing their, their uh, task of monitoring Starliner's approach. Um, the Starliner, again, is holding at 10 meters. Uh, they're planning on retracting the NASA docking system ring uh, to reset the system, uh, and that uh, is expected to take up to 30 minutes. The back end of the flight uh, approach uh, final approach initiation window uh, is expected to um, uh, be on sort of the, the, the assessment time, uh, so we'll be targeting a new window. Uh, we'll assess uh, the next opportunity to push in for a docking, making sure that Starliner and its systems are all good uh, before we press in for that docking. Uh, and we'll get back to uh, uh, report that as soon as we have more information on the new window time. Flight controllers reporting that the ring is retracting. As you heard there on the call to the station, this is a uh, this is a step that'll take about 30 minutes. So they're assessing the uh, new times for final approach initiation and contact.
Rescue Coordination Center uh, started receiving distress signals. The bridge was starting to fill up with water. The ship was sinking and got them out on top of the rescue boat. Winds up to 60, 70 knots. Who started to separate one by one? Wave height 50 to 60 feet. I was finally I was alone. For those just uh, tuning in, the Starliner is holding at 10 meters. Um, the uh, teams have decided to uh, retract the, the uh, NASA docking system. Uh, the ring that was re uh, extended is now retracted to allow them to reset the system, and the teams are looking at the docking system. Teams are now evaluating the uh, next opportunity to push in for docking. And uh, we expect to be reporting that soon. Station Houston, Space Ground 2 for FAI time. With you on 2. 
Shall we, we have been able to extend out the, the latest FAI time for this opportunity to 0042, which is about 37 minutes from now. We do expect that the NDS system is going to be in a good config prior to that. So we will be coming to you a little bit before we initiate the approach, but we do expect to make this window. Okay, that sounds great. So uh, FAI time uh, stretched out to um, 0042, uh, so within 37 minutes we can expect to start um, approach. That's the plan. Okay, sounds great. We're standing by. So you heard their words up to the crew. Uh, we're looking at a uh, final approach initiation burn at 7.42 p.m. Central Time. That would put first contact four minutes later, 7.46 p.m. Central Time. This is being done while the uh, flight team works with the uh, docking system that is on Starliner. After having the docking ring extended, they've retracted it, and uh, they are going to re-extend it. The process takes uh, it takes about 30 minutes, so that's uh, that's this one, and uh, basically puts um, that ring is is uh, what extends from Starliner and uh, allows the connection to the docking port on the forward uh, port of this International Space Station. It's a very short extension and uh, basically allows the uh, vibrations or any other uh, motion of, uh, of the spacecraft to dampen out. Then it retracts. It's kind of a, a set of springs and shock absorbers. It retracts and allows the, uh, allows the Starliner to complete its uh, connecting process with the International Space Station. So again, we're looking at a uh, final approach initiation burn at uh, 7.42 p.m. Central Time, docking four minutes later at 7.46 p.m. At this point, Starliner continues to hover at the uh, point where it's about 10 meters from the International Space Station. It is inside the approach corridor where it's supposed to be. And uh, you can see from some of the graphics there that uh, the small thrusters on Starliner are making little uh, maintenance burns, uh, just little pulses to keep Starliner in position at that 10 meter hold point.
We're getting a look at the uh, Starliner flight director, Ed Van Sice, uh, to his right uh, is uh, the Starliner Capcoms. They're here to, to learn about the processes and, and understand the decision making that's happening in this room so they uh, can uh, relay it to future crews on board Starliner. Uh, you have Neil Nagata there as well as Butch Wilmore. Uh, who will very, um, be f inside the Starliner vehicle for the crude flight test. Uh, to, to Van Sice's left is Pooja Jisrani, another uh, flight director here, also monitoring uh, Starliner systems. Teams here, uh, they are actively discussing some of the next steps and making sure that we're good to go. We're targeting the end of uh, this docking window opportunity. So the uh, final approach initiation burn uh, we're currently targeting is uh, 7.42 p.m. Central Time. That'll push us in for a docking a few minutes later. And rendezvous officer just reported to uh, flight director that uh, demo three, which is a series of uh, VESTA demonstrations, have been completed. So while Starliner holds here at the uh, 10 meter point, the sensors on the nose of Starliner have done exactly what they're supposed to do. There's uh, actually the uh, demo three is there's a four part. Um, four-part series uh, of, of readings uh, and demonstrations that Vesta has um, taken part in going all the way back to um, to the TPI burn which is the uh, terminal phase initiation and uh, more at, uh, at the inbound fly around and uh, and completing it just um, completing it uh, here, while Starliner is at the 10 meter point, that doesn't um, doesn't have anything to do with the docking ring, but it it is a uh, demonstration of those sensors. Station Houston, Space Ground Two for Starliner status. Good news, the NDS troubleshooting was successful. Uh, the ground is in the process of re-extending the ring. We are expecting to make this window. All right, that's great news. We're standing by. And good news going up to the crew that the uh, docking ring troubleshooting has, uh, has succeeded. It's looking good, so... Uh, the crew has uh, the crew on the International Space Station has been advised that uh, we will make this window. That means we are pressing forward to the f final approach initiation burn at 7:42 p.m. Central Time, which will lead to a uh, contact time four minutes later, 7:46 p.m. Central Time. 
In the meantime, getting more great views of Starliner and uh, as it hovers there just, uh, just away from the International Space Station. MPO reports that the uh, docking ring is extending. The MPO controller is uh, short for mechanical and power officer. So she is reporting that the docking ring is extended and then that's going to um, otherwise keep us in, uh, in position for a final approach initiation burn again. Our schedule is for 7.42 p.m. Central Time. The Starliner, in the meantime, is uh, at 10 meters away from the forward port of the International Space Station. MPO reports that uh, the ring has been extended and is ready for capture.
station Houston space to ground two. Houston is go for final approach. Stand by for final approach initiation call. Station copies go for final approach and stand by. And you heard there the crew being advised that the teams are go for final approach. All right, the teams here are uh, talking through. Uh, there is an opportunity to uh, execute the uh, final approach initiation much earlier than anticipated to beat a seven minute handover or a, a handover in seven minutes. Uh, we can expect the, the teams, they're talking about it now, to go ahead and execute that maneuver. And they just did. Final approach initiation has been commenced. Houston on two. Starliner final approach has begun. Perform steps eight and nine in one decimal one zero two. The approach to docking port for the vehicle mode, steps eight and nine in work. Starliner inside 10 meters. And on the move, 0 0.04 meters per second. It'll take four minutes to close this distance of what is now less than nine meters to the International Space Station's forward port. Image we were seeing coming from the one of the external cameras on the ISS just shifted the views. Now watching uh, Starliner make its uh, make its final approach. Docking ring extended. Seven meters away from the forward port. Estimated contact a little bit more than two minutes, crossing two minutes to contact right now. Starliner continuing to close in on the International Space Station at a distance of 5.3 meters, closing in at 0 0.05 meters per second, alternating views between the International Space Station and the Starliner sensors themselves as they close in on the forward port of the Harmony module. Starliner looking to connect to the International Docking Adapter there at the uh, forward end of Harmony. Docking ring extended, you can see some of the separation coming in with that inner ring. Those three pedals will inside four meters. One minute to contact. Inside three meters. Quiet in the control room.
Star Ladder continuing to close in. Two meters, Star Ladder coming two meters to the International Space Station. One meter to docking, less than 20 seconds. Press to dock. Contact, capture. Soft capture confirmed. Happy station is showing good soft capture. Boeing Starliner spacecraft completes its historic first docking to the International Space Station, opening a new avenue of access for crews to the orbiting laboratory. That docking time comes at 7.28 p.m. Central Time. The International Space Station was 271 statute miles over the South Indian Ocean with the Starliner attached to its forward port. Cheers all around the control room after that, uh, after that docking by Boeing Starliner spacecraft. The docking is not complete. It's a the docking ring that uh, was extended uh, will have to be retracted to complete the capture. Right now, it's a soft capture. Starliner connected to the forward port of the International Space Station. Flight controllers working through their methodical approach to uh, complete the docking, to complete all the connections between the Starliner and the International Space Station's forward port. That docking time came at 7.28 p.m. Central Time. Station Houston Space to Ground 2 for Node 2 hatches. Over station. You are go to open the port and starboard hatches. And copies, we are go to open port and starboard hatches, no two. It's in work. Good read. Again, that's a soft capture at 7.28 uh, p.m. They still have to retract the ring and pull the, uh, the spacecraft into the uh, International Space Station uh, for a sequence for a hard dock. And we'll stand by for that. In the meantime, the crew on the inside of the space station has closed the hatches to the uh, Japanese module and the uh, European module. They'll go ahead and open those uh, that needed to be closed as a, as a flight requirement for the docking phase. Uh, so they'll open those up uh, while we wait for the sequence to uh, proceed through hard docking.
MPO reports the ring is aligned. And you can see it physically, the uh, NASA docking system ring that's on board the Boeing Starliner is retracting. You can see the spacecraft itself get closer to the International Space Station. In the meantime, the space station's attitude control systems themselves have been configured to allow uh, for this uh, uh, hard dock sequence. They have to be in a certain configuration. Thrusters are disabled for hard mate. Copy, thrusters disabled for hard mate. And that uh, configuration, of course. And NDS has been working great, so no issues. Sounds great. Good to hear. Good reports on the uh, thruster configuration. That uh, that's the attitude control uh, of the International Space Station. That's in a good configuration, and they're reporting uh, that the Boeing Starliner's uh, docking system is is uh, performing as expected. Uh, you can see the ring retraction, uh, which is uh, close to complete. We'll get confirmation of that soon as we go close to uh, uh, the hard dock sequence to mate uh, Starliner spacecraft to the International Space Station. MPO reporting that uh, the first set of hooks are closing. To uh, there are two sets of uh, two sets of hooks that uh, will close to complete the stocking process. The first set of six, and then a second set of six. So right now, they're working on that first set. Once those hooks are connected, there's a couple of umbilicals reaching from Starliner that will uh, connect to the International Space Station. Those will be data and electrical uh, transmission. All six hooks on gang one are closed. Next up, we'll be closing the second set, second set of hooks.
in Star Liner Mission Control Center. This saw the uh, first docking to the International Space Station by the Boeing Starliner spacecraft. Of course, the uh, controllers and uh, those in the viewing room behind us uh, cheered, cheered that uh, historic first. And over in the ISS flight control room, there was a uh, audience at least as interested in everything that's been happening today. And uh, for that perspective, over to Leah Cheshire. Thanks, Steve. That's right. Uh, everyone here is pretty happy to see the Boeing Starliner arrive at the International Space Station, docking to that Node 2 uh, Harmony port. And this is the first time that we have both commercial crew partners docked to the International Space Station at the same time. So a really cool sight to have both Crew Dragon and Starliner there. So teams are continuing to monitor as those hooks drive uh, to firmly secure Starliner to the space station. And it takes about 10 minutes for that hard mate to be secured. Now, the solar arrays on the International Space Station side will be maneuvered back to their previous configuration after having been feathered, which means they are uh, oriented and protecting them from any inadvertent impacts from the vehicle, like the thruster firings that we saw and during that hold and as it uh, approached the vehicle. Later on, they will pressurize the vestibule, which is the space between the station hatch, which was exposed to space previously, and Starliner's hatch. But now that Starliner has arrived, the crew has to wait until tomorrow for hatch opening, but you can watch live starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It's, a, it's moving pretty smoothly here uh, in Mission Control Houston as those hooks continue to drive, but to carry us through the rest of that process and to keep us up to date with the latest on Starliner, sending it back to you and uh, Gary over there in the Starliner flight control room. Thanks for joining us here in Mission Control Houston, and that'll wrap it up for me tonight. All right, uh, thank you, Leah. Um, we are continuing to monitor uh, the Starliner's uh, hard dock to the International Space Station. Uh, good reports from the space station side, uh, uh, going back to nominal attitude control. Uh, of course, there are six hooks that are keeping the uh, Starliner secured to the International Space Station right now to complete a hard capture. Uh, there has to be a, a second, uh, what's called a gang of hooks, so that's another six. Uh, there, there's a, a period in between the closing of each hooks for an assessment before they go ahead and uh, continue to drive those hooks for a, for, uh, secure docking to the International Space Station. We're just standing by for that. Uh, but a recap, we did have a 728 uh, was the uh, 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 contact and so soft capture time where the Starliner spacecraft made contact with the International Space Station. At the time, the station and Starliner were traveling uh, 271 statute miles over the South Atlantic or South uh, Indian Ocean, uh, just south uh, off the coast of Australia.
Station Houston Space to Ground 2 for Starliner. We're currently in the process of driving the second gang of hooks. Station copies, good news. Second set of hooks drag, driving now uh, to complete that connection. Six have already closed, six more. Six more moving into position now. MPO reports all of the second gang of six hooks are closed. That completes all 12 hooks being closed. Meaning that Starliner is fully connected to the International Space Station docking port. The umbilicals will be extended momentarily to uh, connect the video and electrical networks, the video and, uh, I'm sorry, the data and electrical networks between Starliner and the International Space Station. MPO confirms hard docking complete. Advance Ice has moved Starliner to dock mode. Another first. That's uh, applause you hear. Houston, space to ground two for Starliner. Yeah, for station. Hard mate is complete. ISS thrusters are enabled, and we can welcome Starliner to ISS. That's great news. Thank you to Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you to the entire ops team for some great work tonight. To the joint Boeing and NASA team, the crew of Expedition 67 would like to offer our congratulations on this momentous occasion. Today marks a great milestone towards providing additional commercial access to low Earth orbit, sustaining the ISS, and enabling NASA's goal of returning humans to the moon and eventually to Mars. Great accomplishments in human spaceflight are long remembered by history. Today will be no different. So to Starliner, its commander, Rosie the Rocketeer, and all the men and women who poured their hearts and souls into this vehicle and this mission, welcome to the International Space Station. Great words, Farmer. Thank you so much for all your great work today. Thank you guys as well. Have a good night. And uh, Station Starliner Control Center here, uh, thank you for the great words. We are happy to be there and looking forward to a great mission. And likewise, the Starliner is uh, looking beautiful on the front of Station. We love it too. In Station Houston, Space Ground 2, one more activity for you when you're ready to copy. Okay, Station, ready to copy. Yeah, if you can verify the no two port and starboard hatches are open, you can perform step two of 1.301, that's the uncrewed CSD-100 post docking leak checks and ingress, and then hold for step three. Okay, copy that. The hatches are open, and uh, we're going to go for step two of 1.301. Good read.
some congratulatory words all around. You see some handshakes here in the Starliner uh, Mission Control Room, uh, Flight Director Ed Van Sice. Uh, after some of the communications you heard between uh, Bob Hines aboard the International Space Station, the uh, International Space Station Capcom, Rob Hayhurst, as well as uh, Neil Degata that you see here as the Starliner Capcom, you heard some of the congratulatory words up to space. Uh, Van Sice uh, addressing the teams here in the Starliner Mission Control Room. Um, Congratulating them for for the hard work that it's taken uh, to get to this moment. Uh, you've heard hand, you've seen handshakes. You've heard applause in this room. Uh, a very momentous occasion here in Mission Control, Houston. And congratulations among all the Boeing team as well, Boeing and NASA working together on this whole mission, on this whole program, of course, um, to get Starliner in this position, launched up into orbit, and now connected to the International Space Station. I understand we are go in 2.1 uh, to uncap the node 2 forward and path. Charlie, you are go.
All right, uh, you're seeing a live view uh, of the busy Starliner Mission Control here in Houston. Um, leadership from Boeing and NASA have entered the room to shake hands with all of the uh, flight control teams who have put forward the hard work uh, to make this moment possible. Starliner docked with the International Space Station at 7.28 p.m. Central Time. Uh, lots of smiles, congratulations, and handshakes. It's certainly a, a busy room. Um, for our coverage, we are nearing uh, the end uh, of our coverage now that uh, the Starliner itself has hard docked to the International Space Station. Uh, however, we are going to follow up our coverage with a uh, teleconference. If you'd like to monitor the teleconference, we're planning to start that at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. You can uh, follow that on nasa.gov slash live. And if you are media and would like to participate in that conference, uh, please reach out uh, to the media contacts identified uh, for the NASA teams. And we'll We'll get you the uh, the right contact information. Uh, so from the NASA side, Steve, that's it for me. Uh, this this was a very momentous occasion, and of course, there's a lot of uh, well deserved celebration in this room that's occurring right now. Uh, it's a very exciting time to be a part of it. Big day, very exciting day, uh, wonderful day here. Um, you're seeing there, like like you said, some of the, some of the people from Boeing and from NASA. Uh, they've all been working uh, very hard to uh, to reach this milestone. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined us this evening. Uh, this is, and uh, shared in in this rendezvous and docking. It's um, it's really something that uh, a lot of people are not going to forget. This is it all takes teamwork, and uh, of course that's really what we're what we're seeing today. You mentioned uh, Gary Hatch open tomorrow. And uh, so everybody will be back in for that. And in the meantime, we are going to say uh, thank you to everyone for uh, for listening in today and for watching our coverage. And uh, go Starliner, go ISS, and we will see you all tomorrow.